Welcome back to Sunday Tea Book episode. 36. You got it. Thirty six. Awesome. So um, I still have that song going through my head. Raise your hand if you love the Gu Jin. All right. This is it for China Tea Book. This is the last episode for mm-hmm. China Tea Book. It is not. I repeat, it is not the last episode of Sunday Tea Book. So uh, hey. Juniper Magpie, welcome. I know who that is. And hey, The Color of Tea joining on Instagram. We've got, um, who's all here on the YouTube side? Simmerji, hey buddy. Jubaijia, Josh, uh, Bruna Palmera. I got Whoa. the wrong glasses on, it's really hard to read. Woo, hey, who's that guy? He just changed his glasses. <laughs> Bruna Palmera, Time Signature MMA. Holy kale surprise and Phil's lunch pack. Oh dude, <laughs> dude, why, why? Oh. <laughs> Oh, time signature <laughs> starts with the punch. Kapow! All right, good one, time signature. Tss, the kale burn. The kale burn. Lola, welcome. Igor, hey. Uh, hola, Igor. Time signature, I love dispelling the wind. Oh, I forget. That's a reference to last week, I think. Um, what? I don't know. I forget. I think it's a reference to last week. Betty, hello. Berang, hello. Zach, hello. Hello everybody, welcome to Sunday Tea Book episode 36, the final installment in Jelly's book, China Tea. I'm going to dive it's into It's a single one. show, my job here is just to be here, have some tea and relax. Right? And we, on that note, you will have a long time to relax. We have a yes. huge Sunday, uh, we have a huge tea trivia time lined up for you to kind of celebrate slash um, commemorate the end of China tea, so I made a jumbo tea trivia, so I better get on with the sort of uh, rigmarole. Hey, Cindy, welcome on YouTube. Hey, Rita on, um, and Tao Tad, hey, welcome on Instagram, guys. So everybody on Instagram, what is, and anybody who's new to this stream, what is Sunday Tea Book? Sunday Tea Book is where Jen and I take books, papers, articles that are full of great information about Chinese tea and its culture, but they're hard to access in the West. They're difficult to get because they're not translated into English. So if you don't read, not let alone speak Chinese, but read Chinese or speak Mandarin, read Chinese or speak Cantonese or whatever, you know, but read Chinese. Think about that for a minute. It threw me off for a while, right? You speak Mandarin, you speak Cantonese, you speak Shanghaiese, but you all read Chinese. If your mind's not blown by that, I don't know. But anyway, that's pretty cool. Am I right? Yes. Yeah, it's cool, right? Anyway, so if you don't read Chinese, it's really hard to get at this information. So what we do, so there's two things we could have done, right? We could have just translate those and publish them on our website. Not a bad option. But <coughs> it's okay. But over the years, but over the years working with Jen, learning about Chinese tea, I realized that more than half the knowledge about why are there why these confusions exist and how to understand them best comes from working through the language the terminology all of these things together so that's where sunday tea book comes from so if you think it sounds boring that we're going to translate a book live on youtube and instagram but instagram you got to go to youtube for the real action especially tea trivia time so get over to youtube quickly because i'm done with you pretty soon instagram youtube deep breath everything's fine that's what Sunday Tea Book is. And this is the last weekend, week, no, the last episode, the last week yeah. for China Tea. So we'll take a little break from uh, talking about Sunday Tea Book and talk about what's in your cup. Let us know what you're brewing. Um, what have you got on the go today? We have got, and again, for those of you on Instagram, you're going to miss out on this, but I'm going to show off the tea we're brewing on YouTube with a special little montage I did, complete with some music. Okay, so as I like to always do, I start with the website and Instagram. You get to see the tea like this. I'll just hold that up for you guys. Oh, it's spilling onto the keyboard. All right, so yeah, we're brewing aged Taeguan Yin 2014. <coughs> and she needs some really badly, so we're going to step it up and get into the Taeguan Yin ASAP. Oh, it's okay. Sorry. Don't, worry. Don't worry. We don't have a mute button or we'd hit it. But um, yeah, so we got aged Taeguan Yin. This is amazing tea, as you can see by the color of the leaf I just showed you and on the screen. Really dark red, almost completely absent of the green tones you see in the lighter 
roasted, the lighter oxidized oolongs. This one is, as I said, from 2014. It has great, I'm just reading it, buttery chocolatey scent, gorgeous, bright on the tongue, great mouthfeel. I'm gonna be checking on those notes. On, I'm showing the website on the YouTube side. So uh, you can head on over to the uh, website to check this tea out as well. And as always, I've got the picture. We've got the, she's put up the stunning pictures of the dry leaf, the brood liquor, and the brood leaf, really important for buying tea online. And there I'm just showing off some of those gourd. Look at the dark color of that leaf. So beautiful. And I did an action shot where I poured it in the red one. Oh yeah, Instagram, run to YouTube. It's amazing, it's quite a production. <laughs> All right, Mary11 on Instagram, welcome. And on Nados, welcome. And uh, yeah, so that's the tea we're brewing. We love to hear what's in your cup. So do let us know. Um, do let us know what you're brewing, how it tastes and how it's going. Jubaijia doing my Huang Da Cha. Nice, Jubaijia is getting his Huang Da Cha on. Time Signature MMA is brewing up some Sleepy Time Herbal Tea. Oh, I guess it's later there. Mm. Don't doze off in the middle. This is going to be an exciting trivia, okay? So stay alert. Jubaijia Ting Shi Huang Di. I don't know what that is. Can you help me out? Huh? Jubaijia seems to be brewing Ting Shi Huang Di. I'm not sure what it is. Mm. Jen no, dispelled idea. the wind. Oh, you dispelled the wind with your cough. Oh. You got the wind out. Yes. Okay, we got you. Thanks for the clarification. <laughs> Time signature. Uh, national script. Can't remember which one though. Oh, there was an emperor who unified the writing, I guess. Cool. Oh, yeah. All right. Yes. Look at all the people joining on Instagram. Instagram, welcome to Sunday Tea Book episode 36. Um, oh, Qin Shi Huang. Okay. Mm. Sorry. The emperor? <laughs> yes. Wakey, wakey. Come on. We got episode 36 starting up. We got to get some tea into this I don't this have girl. any tea today. Just. Wow. We got to rock and roll. So, Instagram, folks, I'll this is. Um, let's talk about the book we're talking about. We're finishing up today a great Ooh. book. China Tea. Uh, so it's written by Jenny Wu. And today we're going to review. Are we going to review the next week's stuff? We're going to reveal. Anyway, stay tuned. So we keep reading China so Tea. So just to be clear, we're going to reveal the next book article or paper that we're going to cover <laughs> in Sunday Tea Book. It's the last episode of China Tea. It is not the last episode of Sunday Tea Book. So next yeah. week, come back for the book that we're going to tell you about at the end of today's episode. Instagram people, jump over to YouTube to make it to the end of the episode. Mm. China so, Tea. This book is a great book for people who just get into tea or uh, have been uh, sipping and learning about Chinese tea for a while. It touches on almost every aspect of Chinese tea from the Chinese mm. perspective, which is very valuable because a lot of times what we learn is we hearsay and hearsay and hearsay. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a great chance for us you and us to stay on the same, to find the same page. Yeah, get on the same <laughs> get page, on get the our same terminology page. all lined up. Yes, uh, and uh, clear up some confusions and misunderstandings. Because sometimes when we talk about uh, learning about tea, tea knowledge or information, some misunderstanding is just simply because of the language mm. the, and uh, the culture barrier. Mm -hmm. It's actually, I have to say, greater than we thought. Yeah, it's mm. a lot greater than I thought. So if you're like me, like when I first got into Chinese tea and the world is constantly shrinking, right? We can fly all over the place and we feel like the, the cultural barriers are coming down. And in many ways they really are. But when you talk about a culture like the Chinese or any other uh, rich culture, which they all are, thousands of years of culture are going to bring about different ways of understanding, just different modes of perception almost mm. like how we've talked several times about how detailed um, Western culture or English culture is in terms of needing to have precision and structure and categories and little boxes mm -hmm. and that's something that um, it's not absent in Chinese culture but it's much less pronounced you know and there's much more casualness about things anyway stay tuned and you'll see lots of examples of this so China tea is wrapping up today we've got an epic super duper mondo Jigabomb, tea trivia time coming, I don't know, tea trivia time coming up for you very soon. Um, Do you want to change to the tea brewing cam? Brew cam, yeah. And, we, and if you jump off of Instagram and head over to YouTube, you'll mm -hmm. be able to see our brew cam where we can get a close in up look at Jen's amazing brewing skills. <laughs> 
All right, I'm gonna say goodbye to Instagram. I think I said everything I needed to say. I told you what Sunday Tea Book's all about. We told you that we're gonna reveal at the end of the episode on YouTube what's coming next week for Sunday Tea Book. Mm -hmm. We told you what we're brewing, and we told you there's an epic tea trivia time. So if that wasn't enough to convince you to jump over to YouTube, I don't think it's gonna happen. So on that note, <laughs> floating over Instagram. See you later, guys. Jump over to YouTube. We'll see you on that side for tea trivia time. All right, holy crow. See what a. Oh, that's a nice good. thumbnail. Next. Sunday tea book. We'll check. I always have to do this, guys. I always try to do it. At, I didn't try this time. I gave up, okay? I totally gave up to even bother wasting my time doing the uh, title before I do it. Now I'm just getting quicker. Da -da -da -da. I'm done. See that? All right, so as I mentioned, we've got Age Tag One Yin. I'm really excited. Uh, haven't tried this tea in ages. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Age take one in. Haven't tried in ages. Okay. And very excited to try it again. Uh, I saw some comments. I just want to catch up. We're kind of getting in the vibe here. Mm -hmm. So um, <clears throat> Ju I noticed that Jubai G, I can't see the comment up there anymore, but he mentioned yeah. that his tea has a really hot chocolate note. And I remember mentioning that when we went out for our ski trip. If you haven't seen that video, I'll pop it in the links down below. Mm -hmm. Um, but um, I remember that tea is so chocolatey. I just love it. Ski video. And if you, um, that was super fun. I'm looking forward to doing more of those kind of getting out of the, getting out of the house videos. Mm -hmm. So, um, Fernanda what says, am I doing? I'm just really doughy today. So says, yeah, she was great a minute ago. I just, when she sat down, it was like, poof. <laughs> I saw it. I saw it evaporate. It was really scary. And then I was just like, oh, I better, uh. Better rock and roll. So anyway, Fernanda loves the teapot. So that's awesome. Time signature Thank says, you. holy hyperbole, Phil. Mm, that was in relation to my tea trivia time. Yeah. Um, jo Josh and Jubaijia talking about the emperor who unified the uh, language. Sunday tea read. We'll be back next week. Same tea time, same tea channel. Simmerji getting in on the Batman <laughs> metaphors with time signature. I love that. And I think we're all caught up. But you know what that means, guys. You know what that means. I hope you know what that means. Well, that's perfect. I brew the tea and now we're ready for tea trivia, now which is my are. favorite time because I can just be here, brew and yep. sip tea and have fun. All right, guys, I'm going to kick this off. I hope this all works out this week. Last week, we had a mini technical difficulty. But tea trivia. I even dropped myself. Time. <laughs> all right. I jumped in the screen and I... Uh, Hopefully everything's gonna. I even cut off the uh, the cheering. See Whoops. you later. <laughs> She's gonna just uh, chill out in the background. I will rotate the situation. Hello. All right, guys. In ten seconds, we're kicking off tea trivia time. We've got fifteen. That's right. One five questions for you. Don't worry about getting the right answer. Take a wild guess. Have fun. Hopefully, the magic computer that calculates the answers will work. Tea trivia starts now. This gent published two important publications about the origins of the tea plant. Is it number one, Lu Yu? Number two, Wu Zhenong? Three, Shenong? Or four, Zhang Tianfu? So just type the answer down in the uh, comments below. You just have to hit the number and hopefully our computer will grab onto your number and calculate the answer for us. And uh, then we'll know how everyone's doing. But again, um, difficulty. Difficulty level of this one, I would say is moderate. Difficulty level. I can smell the tea from here. I'm going to try and talk about the tea while we do tea. tea trivia time. So this gent published two important publications about the origins of the tea plant, meaning where the tea plant came to life in the world, in history, prehistory, in fact. I brew that a little bit strong to mm. wake me up. I hope really you nice. Mind. Guys, I see lots of answers for three coming in, lots of answers for one. Um, yeah, one and three dominating the board right now. Uh, you still have time to sneak your answers in for a few more minutes and fingers crossed that we get the answer calculation working today. I didn't do anything because it's a back-end plugin, but fingers crossed just the same. So, oh mm. yeah, it's working and everybody guessed one and three and nobody guessed uh, Wu Ju Anong, but that's okay. We're here to have fun. Good guesses, everybody. A few of you guessing the sort of dis the mythological discoverer of tea, Shenong, and a few of you guessing Lu Yu, the author of classic of tea. Great guesses. We'll talk more about Wu Ju and Ong later. For now, next question. The T-Horse Road is best described as one, a dangerous single route 
from Yunnan to Tibet. Two, a network of roads with two main routes leading to Tibet. Three, an ancient autobahn. Autobahn. Yeah, autobahn, yeah. Four, a market <laughs> where tea and horses were sold. The tea horse road is best described as. Mm. Holy misfire, right? Time signature because I, stum <laughs> I stumped the crowd. I don't want to, I don't know. I don't want to set up this sort of us, me versus you paradigm, but I do, I do try to stump you sometimes and I'm not upset when it happens. I kind of love it. <laughs> But I still want you guys to have fun, so I also want you to get lots of right answers. All right, guys, the T Horse Road is best described as a dangerous single route from Yunnan to Tibet. Mr. Remenon knows the Autobahn in Germany. Two, a network of roads with two main routes leading to Tibet. Three, an ancient Autobahn. Four, a market where tea and horses were sold. How would you best describe the T Horse Road? Lots of guesses for two coming in, a couple guesses for one. Uh, a guess for four. Great work, everybody. It looks like uh, two, four, six, seven of you got the right answer with a network of roads ba way back. So this tea, this uh, tea trivia time is kind of a review of the whole book. So back in the <laughs> tea uh, in the tea horse road section, we talked about how this wasn't really a single road. It was a bunch of roads, some starting in Ya'an going to Tibet, some starting in Yunnan going to Tibet. Not necessarily one clear route the whole way. Excellent. The most typical ways of classifying tea are one, color, processing, and flavor, two, cost, leaf size, and plant age, three, where purchased, monkey picked, and caffeine content, or four, plucking time, season, <laughs> garden geography, and processing style. What are the most typical ways of classifying tea? Right, so to generate this Mondo tea trivia time, mm -hmm. what I did was I kind of went back through the book and just cherry picked. Hopefully no duplicates, but I might, have, I might have done some of the same questions. We'll see. And just pick some questions to review. Very so, cool. So back in the tea classification section, we kind of talked about some of these things. And again, I'm not testing if you paid attention or if you reviewed. You're not meant to study for these. These are meant to have fun, but also it's kind of fun to learn and repetition helps us learn. So here we are. The most typical ways of classifying tea. Lots of answers for four. Plucking time garden geography and processing style coming in. I see an answer for cost, leaf size, and plant age. A couple of those out there. Josh with a huge comment that may be too long to read in the context of tea trivia time at this moment, but I'll come back to it later. Should you wasn't in the beginning of the stream because I'm still trying to set everything like my laptop and headphones. <laughs> you guys got to do what I do. You got to sit down around 1230 and get all set up so you're ready for tea trivia time or completely ignore the beginning where we all basically say the same thing every time. I, oh, I missed all the right answers. So you guys saw the right answer. It was basically um, um, season, uh, process, and uh, oh boy. Geography, plains or, plains or mountain tea. Okay, so that was the right answer. So good, congrats to everybody who got it right. Appreciating tea as an expert involves slurp, sip, snort, and sneeze. Two, three looks, three smells, three tastes, three aftertastes. Three, careful attention. Four, not chugging your tea. What does appreciating a tea, what does appreciating tea as an expert involve? Mm. <laughs> Cherry picked, monkey picked, or tea leaf picked. Nice one. Couple more seconds to sneak in your answers. I see plenty of answers for two and answer for one. Thank you, Betty, I love that. Slurp, sip, snort, and sneeze. Mm. That could be a pretty good technique for appreciating tea. Or perhaps a trick and it's three. You never know, Josh, I am fairly tricky. Lots of guesses for two coming in here. I don't know, something about two must have seemed obvious because it is indeed the right answer and just about everybody got it right. Careful attention is of course uh, required, so that's a great, great answer too. But in the book, we talked about three looks, three smells, three tastes, and three aftertastes. So the looks were of course the dry leaf, the liquor, and the brood leaf, and so on and so on. Go back and check out the episode. I kind of wanted to review, but there's just no time. The questions are coming in a hellfire storm of uh, barrage. Anyway, here we go, next question. <laughs> the ideal water for brewing tea is one, spring water, two, reverse osmosis filtered water, three, 
spring water from the mountain of the garden, or four, distilled water. What is the ideal water for brewing tea? And I chose the word ideal carefully, which is to say there's not many waters which could successfully brew any given tea. But the ideal, the pinnacle, the paramount, the top, the zenith of all water for brewing tea, which one would it be? Would it be spring water? Reverse osmosis water? Spring water from the mountain of the garden? Or four, distilled water? See lots of answers for one. I see some answers for three. The three is a pipe wish. Mm. Well. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just say that because when we're on the mountain, that is exactly what we brew with because there's no other water on the mountains. Typically the, uh, the tap water in the homes, not typically, but in some of my experiences, which is, are indeed limited. So the correct answer was three. The spring water from the mountain of the garden is indeed the ideal water. Of course, every, a lot of guesses for spring water, another great type of water, but even um, filtered water with your Brita or distilled water could work. As we talked about in the water episode, uh, I'm gonna have to link to all of them. We have a webpage where all of these tea books are there. So if you've missed any of these and you wanna go back and check them out, they're all there for you. All right, next question. The key step in making green tea, kill green, one, encourages fermentation, two, stops mold, three, prevents oxidation, or four, is unethical, and especially if you're green. <laughs> right? I like this one. Poor Kermit. I'm gonna right? grab a serving pot. What happens to Kermit in the kill green situation? Not good, folks. That's why he sings the song, It's Not Easy Being Green. All right, answers for um, like dreaming of Tiger Spring near Hangzhou. Mm. All right, a few more moments to sneak your final answer in, folks. I see lots of answers for three. So as you remember, part one of the book covered uh, a bunch of foundations of appreciating tea and getting to know tea. And part two do dives into uh, the six tea categories plus scented and um, that's where we are now lots of guesses for three great work correct answer is indeed oh you guys hit a home run da -da -da -da. Wow, I gotta get a special great. buzzer for that yes. when, when you guys hit a home run uh, I'm gonna work on that for the next round but yes indeed the key step in making green tea which is kill green is indeed to prevent oxidation to ideally fully stop oxidation all right, next question. Four sounds funny. Mm. Yes, I try to make some of the answers sound very funny. Which is not a green tea? Is it one, Jiu Chu Hong Mei, two, Longjing, three, Bi Lo Chun, or four, Lao Zhu Da Fang? Which one is not a green tea? It's a typo. Oh no, I have a typo. Let's tell everybody where the uh, typo is so they don't. Four, Lao Zhu, Z H U. Oh, Zhu, Z H U. Okay, my bad. J U in. Uh, is, uh, mm. So it is ju, not ju, if you could understand the difference. Anyway, the fourth one should be lao zhu, not ju. So that's my typo, so I'm correcting myself. I see some guesses for one coming in. Um, Betty threw up a little, the little fireworks for their home run hit. All right, so uh, lots of guesses for one. Whoa, look Whoa. at those answers rolling in. Everybody guessing one. Come on, somebody, oh. step out on a limb. It's another, there's another typo on number four, F-A-N-G. Mm. Obviously, I didn't even know that kind of tea, so I just uh, went completely by ear and totally messed it up. <laughs> da -da -da -da! Everybody got a home run again. Whoa. Two, four, six, 14 right answers with okay. Jiu-Chu Hong Mei. If you, were, if you keyed off the word home to guess that that's probably not a green tea, good work. That is indeed a black tea or as the Chinese call it, a red tea, hom cha, and uh, it is made from the Lomjing cultivar, and it is suitably delicious. We had a little cup the other day. At least the one we had was, ooh, so good. All right, guys, we're moving right along. The key step in making yellow tea, yellowing, one, requires pigments, two, is very simple, three, introduces slight oxidation, or four, doesn't make much difference. <laughs> 
So the key step in making yellow tea, so if you've kind of, if you wonder if we're kind of walking through the tea types now, yes we are. We're about halfway through our Mondo Super Duper Tea Trivia time, and we're on the question about yellow tea. Yes, indeed, Cindy says, what a clever crew. I couldn't agree more. You guys are knocking this one out of the park. So the key step in making yellow tea, which is known as yellowing, perhaps not that elucidating, does it, one, require pigments? Two, is it very simple? Three, does it introduce slight oxidation? Or four, does it not make much difference? Plenty of people guessing three. Oh, sorry. Plenty of people guessing three. Having a great time. I hope everybody's having fun. This Taeguan Yin is definitely amazing. Whoa, 16 people. Again, everybody hit the right answer. You guys are crushing tea trivia time today. Way to go, everybody. Betty, can I get another fireworks, please? All right, guys, way to go. We're having a great time with uh, tea trivia time. We're on to the next question. White tea processing, uh, the first answer is all of these, which are two, is the simplest in terms of number of steps. White tea processing is not at all simple to execute well. White tea processing requires delicate handling. Or white tea processing is all of these. Which will it be? So when you first brewed this tea, the aroma snuck right up and uh, got me. And I have to say, I still agree with the, uh, the write-up has a little bit of buttery. It's just divine. Mm. Like I just that and the age creamy mm. and the floral combination yeah. that yeah. deep like I Okay guys, you have a few moments left to slide your final answer in. Plenty of answers for uh, plenty of number one. I see some two and some four. Uh, two is the simplest, four is requires delicate handling. Um, great, great look, everybody's rolling in here. Another answer for two. One, two, and four. Three is not making any traction whatsoever. Poor answer number three. Great work, everyone, who got the right answer, which is that it is all of those. It is the simplest in the terms of number of steps. It is indeed not simple to execute well, despite its simplicity in terms of the appearance in number of steps being low. And it does indeed require delicate handling of the leaf to avoid bruising them and making them turn brown when they're fresh spring white tea. <sighs> Next question. Oolong tea. Oolong teas achieve, I think maybe spelled wrong. Oolong teas achieve parcel... Uh, Cindy will let me know if I spelled achieve. Right? I think so. Oolong teas achieve partial <laughs> oxidation thanks to this step. Guys, I was up real late doing this. Please go easy on me, okay? We're having fun here. <laughs> Oolong teas achieve parcel oxidation thanks to this step. Is it one, kill green, sha ting? Two, piling, doi ting? Three, shaking, yao ting? Or four, withering, I don't know ting? I don't know ting. Oh, it? because he was, that was the question. He was bugging me about all those ting words. I was like, oh. Keyword bugging, right? So I, <laughs> by, the, by the fourth one, by withering, I was like, just let it go. Let it slide. <laughs> don't ask. All right, lots of guesses for three rolling in. I see a guess for four. Uh, time signature, there can be only one, which is all of these. Oh, yes. A little reference to, oh, I'm blanking on the movie, the uh, one with the, the immortals with swords. The Scottish immortals. There can be only one. Highlander. I think it was Highlander. Help me out if... All right, everybody, great work for all of you who got the right answer. The key, uh, the, the, the oolong tea achieves parcel oxidation thanks to the yao ting or the shaking step. I think you posted me recently trying to do that by hand. Mm -hmm. Super, super hard by hand. Mm -hmm. um, also very rarely done by hand because it is super, super labor intensive and tricky to do well. Okay, guys, great work on that one. Next question. Which tea elevated the status of black tea in China? Is it one, Ying Hong, number nine? Number one is number nine. Two, Lap Sam Su Chong. Three, Earl Grey. Or four, Jin Jun Mei. Which tea elevated the status of black tea in China? Yes, H I G K. I don't know what that means. Oh, retract it. I guess it was a typo. 
I'm really enjoying my 1998 aged Ansi Taeguan Yin. First time I've brewed it. Wow. She really lines up with us. Cindy, oh. every time you manage to line up the tea, like perfectly, really well done. Really well done. All right, guys, a few more moments to slide in your answer to which tea elevated the status of black tea in China. Lots of answers for four coming in. Um, uh, there's, an, there's, an answer, there's a two, a couple twos coming in. Lap Sam Suchon, no one's guessing Earl Grey. I couldn't, I couldn't fish anybody in with that one. Oh well, it was a good shot. Which tea elevated the status of black tea in China? All right, so a few guesses for Lap Sam Suchon, but the correct answer I was looking for was Jin Jun Mei. But I realized that maybe depending on your point of view, uh, Lap Sam Suchon was indeed the first black tea, and it did create the status of black tea in China by being the first black tea and generating a new export for the Chinese. So in terms, of, in that terms, it was status, but Jin Jun Mei was the one that brought Chinese tea into China as a real tasting grade tea. The black tea category was up until then considered for export mostly. All right. The key step in dark tea making, piling encourages one, oxidation, two, yellowing, three, the tea turns almost black, or four, microbial fermentation. Three is such a non-pro word. Yeah, it was a little chunky, huh? <laughs> You can see that we're getting pretty far along in the question. So if you use your imagination, you can figure out that it's probably like 11, 10 past 11, maybe 11, 15 by now. So I'm getting a little more sloppy. That's okay. I think it's still fun. I see some answers for four rolling in here. Still a few moments to slide in your final answer, folks. Uh, lots of answers for four. The key step in dark tea making, which is piling, encourages... It did works actually. The key step in dark tea making, piling, encourages the tea to turn almost black. See? Really smooth. It's smooth. Or, it's just does it encourage oxidation? Does it encourage yellowing? Or does it encourage microbial fermentation? Mostly guesses for four with a bold guess. Way to go, Lolo, with a, with a bold guess for one and Igor for guessing oxidation. But it is indeed encouraging microbial fermentation. Uh, and there's plenty we could talk and did talk about that check out the dark tea episode to learn more about that. I'm going to put a link to Sunday Tea Book down below so you can access all of the episodes that we reviewed here during trivia. We're getting close to the end. We're on our uh, second or third last question here. Whoa. And here we go. The symbols of China are one, Huawei, TikTok, and WeChat. <laughs> Two, Dun Dun Mian, Hot Pot, and Stinky Tofu. What? Three, Porcelain, Silk, and Tea. Or four, yin and yang. <laughs> Early on in the tea trivia time, Cindy noticed that many of the answers that contained the word tea were the correct answer. Then suddenly I turned everything around. In the middle of the section tri tea trivia times, the answers that contained the word tea tended to be the wrong answer. How will it end here? <laughs> Who knows? Take your guesses. Still some time to place your bets, folks. Still some time to place your bets. Phil knocked it out of the park today with a mega TTT. Simmerjeet, thank you so much. Thank you so much. I've come to really love dark tea or post-fermented tea. Yes, time signature. I 100% agree. It is. Uh, it hit me in the same way too. Some of them, especially um, Qian Liang Cha, didn't instantly like, oh, I love this tea. Over time, deeply love that tea. Deeply love Qian Liang Cha. Mm, very good. All right, guys, the symbols of China are, again, according to the book, we just did this section a couple weeks ago, porcelain, silk, and of course, tea. And good guess, yin and yang, could be a, arguably a symbol of China as well. So could Dun Dun Mian, Hot Pot and Stinky Tofu, That's or Huawei, guess, TikTok, eh? and WeChat. All of the above. Mm, good guess, Zach, you're bang on there. All right, guys, next question. Which tea would be recommended? on a hot summer's day, according to TCM. Would it be one, green tea, two, iced tea, three, bubble tea, or four, black tea? No, I like bubble tea. <laughs> Who doesn't like bubble tea, especially now with all those little creamy, cheesy toppings and stuff? You can get all kinds of wackadoo bubble teas. I'm gonna do a bubble tea recipe. Mm. If you wanna see a bubble tea recipe on our channel, uh, leave a comment down below or comment on the live stream. Uh, we've done a couple recipes just for fun. We love doing them. 
Still a few moments to get your answers in, folks, for this question, which would be recommended on a hot summer's day according to TCM? Would it be green tea, iced tea, bubble tea, or black tea? So we're thinking about doing a bubble tea recipe based on this cool question. And Time Signature just says, iced tea, y'all. Yo, he's talking about a rapper, yo. Nice one. Simmerjeet, one. Everybody guessing one. Looks like everybody's guessing one for which would be recommended on a hot summer's day. And let me know also, do you actually take, uh, do you actually uh, use hot tea on a hot summer's day to help you cool off? Oh boy, I'm so proud of you guys. Boom, three or four out of the park, home run answers. Everybody got the right answer. Green tea it is. Um, Lolo has never tasted bubble tea, looks awful. It's not as bad as you think. It's more dessert rather more than More of a tea. dessert like than a tea, a yeah. A filling tea. That's and it also depends if you like the texture of those tapioca bubbles, uh, right? Some people don't like that. I but... like coconut gel. All right, guys, here we go. We are on the final question of Tea Trivia Time, the epic Mondo Mega Boom <laughs> Tea Trivia Time for the final episode of Sunday Tea Book, episode 36, China Tea. The next book, article, or paper for Sunday Tea Book will be one, <laughs> classic of tea. Two, how the Grinch stole a tea plant. Three, stay tuned until the end of the episode to find out. Or four, correcting Wikipedia articles on tea. <laughs> we should do a whole different stream on that. Yeah. The next book, article, or paper for Sunday Tea Book will be, will it be one, the classic of tea? Josh, I put that there just to tease you a little bit. <laughs> Two, how the Grinch stole a tea plant. Talking about Bobby F right there, talking about Bobby F. Three, stay tuned to the end of this episode to find out what will be the next subject of Sunday Tea Book, or will it be four? We'll just go on, we'll just go on the web and correct Wikipedia articles at random, which you could spend a lot of time doing. Just saying. All right, guys, place your bets, place your bets, no more bets. Way to go, we got another oh. home run, two, four, six, 17. A perfect ending for this. 17 right answer with a perfect ending to a Mondo mega delicious tea trivia time. And now we're gonna see the roundup in a few moments, the computer is tabulating your final results. But in my book, you are all winners. You did great, guys. Hey, Nicole, tea for me, please, with 14. Wow, 14 out of 15 right answers. Also, Mr. Amemnon with 14. Bruna Palmero with 13. Josh, Berang, Betty, Cindy, all with 12. You guys are all awesome. super winners in my book. You did great, guys. That was an excellent excellent uh, round of Sunday tea book. Wow. wow. Back to your regular programming folks. That was intense. Okay. That was intense. I hope you guys love that as much as I did. I thank you all each and every one of you so much for participating. Sorry, I got to adjust my legs or I'm going to get a lot of criticism about bump, bump, bump. Because I have bumped so many times already. All right. <laughs> you want to slide outside? No, I should slide here. Oh, out of the frame? Yeah. Where am I? Save me some bum bum bum. Here I am. All right, I'm just goofing around. Sorry, we got a lot of uh, ground to cover today, folks. I got to serious up and don't hit the table so much. Okay. I'm, okay. I'm just kidding. I don't have to serious Why am up. I so excited? Because I want to talk about this tea. Not much to talk mm -hmm. about. Because I just... Uh, Not much to talk about. No. How could you say that? <laughs> How could you possibly say that? There is a lot to talk about about this tea and... Yeah, there is a lot. It's just because you're not sipping out with me. It's just me talking about the tea, which in terms of the taste, you know I'm not good at describing the elements of tasting. It's just, just that most feel that depth that I can take one sip and just sit here okay. watching him uh, host the whole show and, you know, what, and all those fun... Um, questions and stuff and mm. just breathe over that that unique mm. depth of this tea the the the, the, the creamy mm. floral combination i cannot name it it's just the, you know we talk about guanyin yin like that say it again guanyin yin yeah mm. so yeah okay. so i just put the uh i put the tea up again because i you, there is a lot to talk about i want to spend a minute <laughs> I don't Sorry, skip, that. skip, skip the website part. I can't fast forward this, but I want to show you guys uh, something that we kind of glossed over with this tea when we started, when we first showed it. So I'm just waiting for the leaf to show up here. But you notice this is a Taeguan Yin, and look at the shape of that leaf, right? So we didn't mention, 
which is worth talking about a little bit, that this is a, it's an aged Taeguanyin, but it's an aged Taeguanyin classic. So it's made using the original Taeguanyin process, which didn't include, um, I, I'm not sure how to call it, but rolling it up into little balls for packaging and shipping. So I think that was also worth talking about too. Even if you're not sipping it, you might be wondering, hey, what kind of weirdo Taeguanyin is that? It's not even rolled into little balls. Well, that's why. And I'm just waiting for the, uh, anyway, that's good enough. I hope the music wasn't too loud. I hope you could hear us okay. Um, anyway, so that is another cool aspect of this tea, which is um, interesting, but not nearly as um, enthralling, perhaps, as that mouthfeel you're talking about, because it is epic. It is yes. deep. It also is uh, similar, like uh, that yun, that is unique taste in classic Taiwanese, as well as the aged Taiwanese. Those are, I mm. found it super deep. And thank you, Igor. I just... I shut off my mic to uh, uh, sneeze or something, and I forgot to turn that back on. Ah, uh, thanks, Igor. Awesome. And the other thing, um, if you're wondering what the heck we're talking about, talking about yun or Taeguanyin yun, why yun is the sort of word I'm trying to say when I say yun. Um, we did talk about it uh, quite a bit in several episodes. It's come mm. up because it is. It's one of the fundamental principles of Sunday Tea Book, I would say, and it itself isn't, but the concept of yun being so important in Chinese tea and so um, hard to explain. And also, I think I'm going to go ahead and say it's generally overlooked. We're very flavor centric with our teas in the West um, and uh, yun is beyond flavor. It's a combination of feel flavor. It's not mystical by any stretch. I don't want you to think that it's some nebulous uh, uh, yogi-like sensation that you have to be on another ethereal plane to understand. Not at all. It's just a different uh, perception and sensation and sensitivity to how the tea is affecting your whole throat, not just your taste buds. Uh, hmm. Did I do okay explaining yeah, that? I think so. Wicked. Didn't pay much attention. How's the cement tea? <laughs> she was in under the effect of Yuan. She is. She's not tea drunk, folks. She's tea hammered. Yes. All right. So Jen is back, and hopefully you didn't miss too much of what she said because my mic was kind of picking her up a little bit there. Um, uh, Josh says, to be honest, I actually really wish you guys would correct all the Wikipedia articles. They are literally horrible. Yeah. Um, every single one of them is basically useless and completely bereft of information. Yeah, or mm. or replete with misinformation, which is even worse, I mm. think. Yes. Um, time signature. Regarding dark tea, I must admit that I am currently exploring Japanese post ferment teas. Very cool. Oh my mm. gosh. I wish we could get out more. I love exploring those kind of crazy teas. Not to say that Japanese dark tea is crazy. I just don't know much about it and I love to taste stuff I don't know much about. It's fun. So good for you, time signature, and way to go. Well done, tea sages. Cindy congratulates the group for an epic performance. I'm still astounded. <laughs> still astounded. Uh, <laughs> and Josh continues to berate Wikipedia for its awful information. Yay, so glad I was finally able to make a live tea trivia. Yes, me too, yeah. Nicole. Thank you for joining Tea For Me, please. Just brewing up some of your Taeguanyin uh, Ting Xiang from way back. Ooh, Ooh that's... let us know how it's rocking. Yeah. Uh, wow, good for you. Time signature, Holy Heartbreak Hotel. Swing those hips. Oh, that was my dance, I think. I'm not sure. All right, Jen's mic. Everything's good. Stupid autocorrect. Take one yin, Ting Xiang. Yes, mm. yes. Aren't those awful? <laughs> autocorrect is absolutely disastrous with uh, Chinese tea names. It is just uh, comical often. Good, uh, but we figured it out. We figured it out. We could understand uh, what you were talking about. Mm. Alrighty, so guys, here we are. Episode 36, we've made it through a Megalopolis uh, tea trivia time. I wanted to take a minute now and do something that's not part of the regular Sunday tea book, but I wanted to take a minute and because it's the last episode of China Tea, and of course Sunday tea book is not gonna be over, but I wanted to take a moment and, uh, and of course, we're going to probably do this again at the end. But anyway, I wanted to acknowledge Jen and say thank you because without her, we could not do Sunday Tea Book. She has not only the knowledge to speak and read Chinese, Chinese but also to be able to 
understand tea terms, which as we saw many, many times throughout China tea, which is translated by, with quite chunky, right? Because the translator, the, the English speaker who was writing it out, didn't understand um, all the tea terms in Chinese. They were Chinese words, just like in English, with multiple meanings. And oftentimes that was a train wreck or at least a fender bender. So we couldn't do this without uh, Jen. She has to spend a lot of time translating, uh, which is like, if any of you operate in a second language, which I know many of you are doing right now, it's really brain bending. It's, uh, <laughs> it's hard. And she does that all the time. She does it for me. She does it for you guys. And I wanted to thank her. You're my hero. Oh, and that's so sweet. Your awesome Sunday tea book is amazing. See, my hero. Oh. You. Messy writing as usual. Messy writing. I was as staring usual. at that notebook so and anyway, I have no I idea. I just wanted to say a big <laughs> thanks to Jen. Uh, and if you guys want to throw up an thank emoji or something um, and give her a big thanks, I think. Like a, whatever a YouTube round of applause sounds like, mm. make it happen, folks, because she's amazing. Yes. I'm going to wake up, okay? And um, <laughs> other tea notes I was supposed to talk about, the color, uh, the amazing process. 2014, no re-roast. The tea we're drinking now, Tae Guan Yin, aged Tae Guan Yin from 2014 with no re-roast. Mm. And I pointed, I was shocked by the aroma, I have to say. Right. First, it's a, uh, oh, I usually do this before we start. First, first, uh, most uh, properly roasted and um, oxidized oolongs aren't going to be like the reason we they do that light is to get that super sensuous aroma to rope you in, get you to buy the tea, and then in a, after some time, it's it it kind of declines. This tea is from 2014 with no re-roast, but and the processing, how impeccable is the processing? The aroma is profound. Even when the first brew, I could smell that. And not to mention that, so those light roasts often sacrifice the mouth feel. This one has the mouth, it's the full package. It's the full package, okay? So that's enough about the tea. We got to get on with translating a book. That's what we're here to do. No, we'll continue to talk about the tea. I'm just saying, I got to move on. I'm, I'm all... I really feel like I'm just a lazy kid and you just move me forward kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, I'm like a fount of verbal... Uh, I'm like a verbal waterfall. I almost used an inappropriate metaphor. Uh, <laughs> I caught myself. Well, thank you guys. I love all the emojis and... Uh, Clifford says, Sissi. Yes, and uh, thank you for participating. That's what makes the whole process fun. That's Absolutely. why we're not like... Absolutely. If I just uh, shoot that as a video and um, air it, it doesn't feel as fun as uh, a live. That yes. I get feedbacks and you guys actually teach me a lot in terms of how to say it mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Never hesitate. Uh, yeah, it takes know, a lot of pressure To help me with my me. English. 100%, because mm. sometimes I can't figure out what's trying to be communicated. So doing this live is what makes Sunday Tea Book magic. Like you said, it wouldn't be the same mm. as a series of videos. It's got to be interactive with Absolutely. you guys. So you guys make a, you guys make the magic happen, mm -hmm. which is exactly where we're headed, because we're about to talk about the magic of tea. Yes, that was <laughs> just a verbal one with my... Very, very... Uh... All right, guys. Here we are. Episode 36. The final episode oh, yeah. of Jen Li Wu's book. Our tea consultant, Jen's mom. Um, just a fabulous uh, writer. She's got six books total. This is one of her six books written on Chinese tea. Look at what we've covered. I'm just going to let it let you guys soak this in, right? The discovery of tea with Shenong. Um where tea grows, how to appreciate it, um, appreciating tea. This was a gold section. I really recommend going back and checking out all of those sections, especially uh, this one here. It's got some great tips. Remember we had the tea trivia question? <laughs> three, it's not a lollipop. We had it's the, not. We had the, uh, the question about three looks, three smells, three tastes, three aftertaste. As I read that over last night, I was like, I got to, I got to get into that more. I got to concentrate more. And uh, mm. so we got a great video on how to taste tea, which, uh, which, uh, which I'll put a link down below. And that's a, that was a game changer for me in getting deeper to be able to appreciate tea. But, and then the, the steps in that, in that, uh, the, those steps are the next big game changer, I think. So then we covered all the tea types, green tea, dark tea, oolong, uh, black tea, white tea, whoa, zigzag, zigzag, sorry guys, white tea, scented tea, 
And now we are in part three, and we're at the very end of part three, the emotion of tea. All right, I'm gonna try not to cry when we're done. I'm gonna try. I'll be all right. <laughs> all right, guys, the emotion of tea. You guys might start crying when I start reading. Here I go. Emotion of tea, magic effect of tea. Tea has been in people's lives for thousands of years. Day by day have been found many special function, which are listed below. Rock and roll. Dermatophytosis treatment. Tea can sterilize and cure derma, derma, dermatophytosis. Tea leaves contain plenty of tannic acid and with a strong bacticidal effect, especially for the hyphomycete. Wash your feet with the strong tea soup every night. A few days later, the disease would be cured. However, to see its significant effect, you must do that consistently. I'm gonna read a few of these yeah. and then we'll circle back. I don't know about all of them because there's a lot. Mm -hmm. We'll see. Eliminating halitosis. Tea has a strong astringency with chewing or gargling some in the mouth can eliminate the bad breath. If you are not good at drinking tea, get better. No, just kidding. Uh, <laughs> just keep some in the mouth, which can release better taste. Uh. Hair care. Tea soup can absterge. Washing your hair with tea water after general washing, which can make your hair black and soft and full of gloss. Moreover, tea does not contain chemicals, which will not damage the hair and skin. Full of gloss. Right, full of gloss. <laughs> Alleviating symptom of a cold. It seems that throat irritation, hoarseness, is a kind of cold. Before you go to see a doctor, drink some strong soup with rock candy, and you will find it can immediately refresh your mouth and reduce your pain. This method was treated as a folk prescription in the countryside at once. Okay, I'm going to stop there. I know it's kind of halfway, but there's quite a number of these. So let me back mm -hmm. up. And we'll, uh, we'll unpack some of this. Okay, guys? Let's unpack. First. <sighs> Man, this is good. Okay. Dermato, dermatophytosis. Okay, guys? Ringworm. I had to look it up. I had no idea what that was. So let me just... Uh, right? If you were wondering what the heck is that or did I say it right? Did I say it right? I don't know. But what it is? Ringworm. And then high... Where's the other one? It's Hy basically means hyphomacy is um, fungus or molds. Right. Mm. That one a kind of is a, a kind of that disease could be caused by that kind of a mm. fungi. So if you this is a good one. We haven't mentioned this yet today, but a great idea for you guys following along right. is to go down to the description down below, find the finished translation where we've got the whole thing kind of tidied up. On our website, you can follow mm -hmm. along there, and you'll notice that one of the uh, aspects of this is athlete's foot. Right? Mm. Is this the one with the foot soak? Yes, yes. Um, like acid. wash your feet, right? Do you call that athlete's foot? Yeah, it's called. Yeah. I changed it in the uh, like I put. I kept right. the, you had the real medical name, right? Which nobody knows, okay, or at least okay. I didn't know. So okay. I put in brackets athlete foot or vice versa. Mm. So pull up that finished translation, guys, so you can follow along, and it will make things even more fun and enjoyable and uh, whatnot for you guys. Yeah, so basically that's talking about those effects, like you can um, help antifungal, antibacterial. Any, yeah, that's mm. the function of, it just needs a, a, a while for it to actually, to have a good result. It's right. not like a two days or a right. week. Right, it's not like those harsh, medi like those medicines yeah. that you get prescribed that are gonna actually just totally brutalize the mm -hmm. fungus, right? This mm -hmm. is something that's got to be done consistently, which is a really good point. Mm. A lot of TCM, uh, well, no, that's not true. Some of them are really instant, but this one, you've got to be on the ball. All right, guys, right. next one, halitosis. So bad breath, right? Mm -hmm. If you are not good, keep some in the mouth, which can release bitter taste. So that was a little bit counterintuitive. Um, if you are not good at drinking tea, keep some in the mouth. So what it says that it is, uh, um, uh, how should I say it? Like a tea in English, uh, would, like uh, it could mean the tea leaves, like uh, the dried ones. Right, right. It could mean the, the, like this, the tea liquor or stuff. In yes. Chinese, uh, it's more clear. It's uh, you put the dry leaf, like uh, you oh. didn't even brew the tea yet. Whoa. The dry leaf of the tea, you have a piece or something, just uh, chew it. 
Okay. That's why you chew it. Okay, that is going to be pretty right. But brutal. that would be pretty intense. So、mm. for people who are not used to tea, who doesn't drink much, you can brew the tea first. Say, now this I brew like six, seven infusions. Now I can take the leaves out and、right. chew it. So it's、Got、less、you. intense. That makes total sense.、Mm. So question, and、uh. I don't know if you know the answer because it's kind of out of the blue, but. One of the things we do when we're in the field quite often is、um, we'll grab the little bud and we'll chew on a bud, fresh, raw, not even、mm. processed. Yes. Would that work too? Yes. I suppose so. It makes your、yes. mouth water like crazy, and those are also、yeah. intense. Yeah. And you notice that if the mouth is really dry, it kind of.、Uh, oh yeah, you're watering. Your mouth is、mm. watering like pretty much instantly. Yeah. There is a cool、um, article in Cha Ren where I talk about that. How Jian Li was. Oh, it's the Tea Whisper. I remember the name and everything. I'll put a link down below to that、uh, after we're done here. I'll put a tea whisperer in Cha Ren. If you want to hear more about how Jian Li had me tasting, she had me tasting tea leaves all over the mountain, and she was、uh, kind of predicting what was going to,、um, you know, this one's in the shade. You know, notice the sweet, or well, she didn't say that first. She had me taste it, observe, and then she explained why, and then sometime predict. Really cool, cool stuff. Anyway, not related. I'll put the link down below. But related to eating tea leaves, that's why. That's why. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Hair care. Okay, guys. <laughs> abstergé. Okay. I had to look full up abstergé. Full of abstairs, gloss. I love that. Right. Full of gloss is also good. But abstergé. Right. What is this? This is an archaic word. I had to look it up. It means to cleanse by wiping. So、oh. basically, you know, washing or wiping. So what, what it means is a kind of like a little bit of like a. A gentle like、cleansing. A right? No, it's a gentle cleansing for grease. You know, it's right, not gonna、okay. clean the pores that we have real cooking oil in it. But that hair grease, or you can use the tea、right. water to wash the face, morning wash. If you are、right. not very very oily, like a, like a normal skin or stuff, that's really good.、It、has a gentle lifting、right. of、okay. those.、Uh, very cool. Thing. Yeah. Okay. So.、Um, Right, I think all in all, pretty clear, right? You can use tea liquor. I was gonna say, and it doesn't say it in the book explicitly, but I think it goes without saying. Possibly, you're not gonna be using your top grade tea for this, folks. Okay. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> right, Peter. I would go to a grocery a store and buy a certified to like organic tea or something.、Mm. Yeah,、mm-hmm. grab a grocery store certified organic, and you can use that for your、uh, for your foot bath. You can use it for your hair, literally head to toe. Yeah. Head to toe,、um, yeah. skin and hair care.、Mm. Um, we have used tea as a face as a toner before. Yeah, we do that.、Mm. Yeah. It's just、uh, people like me who is like a really、uh, like a oily face. Just use tea is not、uh, sufficient, but I、mm. uh, sometimes use that as a toner. Overly glossy. I'm full of gloss. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So alleviating symptom of a cold, and this one's pretty pretty straight up too, right?、Um, mm-hmm. I don't think there is anything too tricky. People might be wondering what rock candy is. That doesn't just mean like a hard candy from the store. It's a rock. It's rock sugar. sugar. It's, the, I th- yeah, I'm not sure how. It's a form of a less processed sugar, but、yeah. it comes in those. I meant、chunks. to bring some、okay. to show them. Oh, check out our video if you want to see rock sugar. We did a video on how to make short ribs, side ribs, side ribs, not short ribs. So、um, you're traumatized. <laughs> so okay, I got to tell the story now. I'm at the butcher. <laughs> I'm at the butcher getting these ribs. That I'm gonna link to the video down below for how to make side ribs. But I'm just, if you don't know what rock sugar is and you want to see it, it's used in that recipe. That's why it's related. Because people probably think I'm crazy all over the map. I'm not all over the map. Everything's connected. Okay. <laughs> Very zen and meditative. Everything is connected. Anyway, the connection here is the rock sugar. But I went to the butcher to get these. Which one? Side ribs. Side, side ribs. ribs. They're super tiny little. So I always want to call them short ribs. So I said, "Hey, can I get some short ribs?" He's like, "They're not short ribs," because <laughs> I was pointing at them. But that's how he said it, and I'm like, "Oh." He's like, "They're side ribs," and I and then I read the sign, which was right there. So he was kind of saying, it, "Read the sign, idiot." They're side ribs. So now I'm really careful because I, I he, for all I know, he's watching and he's like, "Good, he got it." <laughs> I got it. Okay, I got it. I'm telling you, I got it. I got I, it. Okay, it's it was side、so、ribs.、Funny. Side ribs. I was traumatized. I'm still traumatized. Can you see? I'm shaking. Yeah, I'm fine. I'm fine. All right, guys. So that's where we left off. I'm gonna get back to reading now. So I gotta scroll up.、Uh, so tea pillow. This is good. Some good story. 
Good stories coming here. Shh, don't spoil it. Okay. Tea pillow. Do not throw away the used tea. Oh no. Do not throw the used tea away. Spread the tea on a wooden board to be dried. A period of time later, this can be made into the stuffing of a pillow. Tea has a cool quality and tea pillow can refresh your mind and enhance mental vitality. Driving out the mosquitoes. Dry up the used tea leaves and light them in the evenings of summer to drive out the mosquitoes, which has the same effect as mosquito coil. Besides, it is harmless. Fertilizer for plants. Nutrients such as minerals and carbohydrates are still in the brewed tea. Bury these tea leaves in the parterres or flower pots, which can promote the growth and reproduction of plants. All right, guys. Tea pillow. I'm a little bit lost. The trouble is when I do my homework early, it ends up quite far back in my book. So now I'm a little bit lost. Here we go. I found it. Oh, tea pillow. Okay, so I think I think it's pretty clear, right? Um, you keep your dried leaves and you fill up a pillowcase and you go to sleep on it. We tried this. Remember? Ah, oh, it's a sad story. I know. So it's, when I, I first I'm got sorry, here, I'm sorry, but I was sort of excited to talk about it. So when I first got here, I'm going to use that because that time I was a study, you know, and uh, I had a mini sleeping issue, so I started to collect all the brewed tea leaves and dry them properly and we had put a them pile. away. We had so a I had a big pile. Big My pile. goal is to make that pillow exactly as described here, the tea pillow. However, once I got enough, I realized the ma major issue is the the pillowcase here doesn't have a zipper. Mm. I couldn't find a zipper to pillowcase. Almost all the pillowcases are like a opened one side or stuff then my my tea is gonna very messy yeah spill very out messy. and the stuff mm -hmm. i was think so yeah eventually i just threw it up because i couldn't find um yeah i couldn't find a proper pillowcase and i don't know how to sew it, it was but sad. if you can find uh you know the zipper where you can put zipper on the pillowcases those are great for the cooling effect, it's like if, if you have a little bit of problem going to sleep or mm. some people, as soon as they start to fall asleep, they start to sweat. Mm. Those are really good too. I see some some folks from Florida, Jubaijia down in Florida. If you didn't have AC, that's sort of the application, right? In those hot, humid climates when you're mm. You won't physically sleep. feel the cooling. It's in the TCM sense, it's cooling. Mm -hmm. Sometimes mm -hmm. we use mum bean, like the green bean, the mini one. In a pillow? In a pillow, yeah, cooling. For kids, a lot of times for kids, you know, some kids uh, every night they cry nonstop. Uh, we put those pillow, pillow for them. And uh, we often feel different things. Chrysanthemum also works uh, like different stuff because, mm. you know, TCM. Stuff. With cooling properties. Mm. Awesome. So that's the tea pillow. Um, driving out the mosquitoes, and Jubaiji was talking about it, might not work against the. Uh, the Florida mosquitoes, um, I know what you mean. We have some pretty intense, uh, for us up here in Ontario, it's more the black flies when they come out. Uh, we have these flies, but it should work with any of those things. Um, this is not one that we have used, but mm. we're excited because we have been keeping egg cartons and we burn those, like smolder those to make a little bit of smoke to keep the bugs away. It works pretty good. Mm -hmm. Excited to try tea leaf. We have right. pretty much an endless supply of used tea leaf, so mm. we'll be trying that out. So uh, let us know. If you do try that out, I would love to know how it works out for you guys. And hopefully we'll be reporting back with our experiments thusly. Mm. Amy was asking about where to buy this book. Um, uh, we get that a lot. Yeah, we That's get that. That's a great question. It is a great and very reasonable question. However. However, <laughs> um, I think, was it uh, uh, not, a, not Mr. Amemnon, but uh, Barang. Barang found a copy on some purple something. Purple if culture? he's around Something. purple culture very good he uh, found a copy on purple culture he snagged up the last one it is tricky to find my best recommendation to you and i know if you're asking you're probably looking for a print copy you probably like to have mm. a real book i get it i still write in a real book Simergy with my nady not nady my pen I can't remember the brand name of the pen. Simmerjeet sometimes asks. I just forget right now. It'll come back to me. Anyway, I love having the hard copy. 
Hmm. But uh, my best recommendation is to bookmark the link uh, that I've got down below. Uh, one level above the finished translation of this episode are all the episodes for Sunday Tea Book and that's going to be a little resource on our website. It's going to be there for you guys to go back to whenever you need to. This book in particular is a fantastic reference mm. for all, we went over so many different tea types, so many different um, details about processing. Uh, it's a great reference. So um, that's my best recommendation. We don't have a physical print copy readily available. You can dig around in the Google sphere and in the web sphere. See if you can find it. That's, that's my best. Did I do a good job? I think that's good. Mm -hmm. All right, let's head out to comments. Uh, I'm looking for my remote. My remote didn't work today, so I'm, I'm reduced to mousing it. That's okay. Right. So let's go and check other comments. I think we're doing okay with the comments. Uh, wow, a lot of comments. Okay, thank you to Jen. Look at all the thank yous. Look at those. Look at how much thank yous. I love That's all it. those emojis. Thank you, guys. Um, Josh says no, thanks no. to Jen and also to Phil, since no one is thanking him for being. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty good, but she's really she's the she's the rock. T by Danny yeah, says stone. you rock. I appreciate you guys. T signature MMA question. I pan roasted some Bai Mudan a couple of weeks ago. Some Nong Jing yesterday. Am I a heretic? Hmm. <laughs> yes. Yes. No, I don't know. I don't I know. You. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Just messing with you. Um, I don't know. It's your. I don't know what. It's kind of like this. Like it's your tea. You know, you can do what you want. Right. Right. Experiment. I, I'd like you to let us know uh, how it changed the tea. Was, mm. Is it better? Is it worse? I'm curious um, how it went. I don't think you're a heretic. I think you're. Uh, at the worst, we could call you uh, adventurous, and possibly experimental. Um, depending on how much you paid for it, maybe, no, I won't say it. <laughs> <laughs> Very adventurous. Um, yeah, no, that's awesome. Let us know how it went. Um, did it get better? Did it get worse? Did it, uh, do a lateral change? Did, you know, I'd love to know more about that. Um, very cool. Amy Taylor, where can we buy this book? Oh, perfect. We already addressed that. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, washing my feet in tea seems a waste though. Yeah, again, right? You're not going to uh, use your premium tea, but maybe the one that you uh, roasted. No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> You're so mad. I'm just awful. Uh, Mr. Amemnon, good question. I'm very interested in getting this book in the English version. Yeah, okay, we got that covered. Whoa, I had a little flip up there. Good. It is called Candice Sugar here in Germany. Ah, oh. rock sugar. I guess that's what they call the um, those little clear crystals of sugar. They're, they're so pretty. Washing your hair in tea only makes it into black if it's already black. Oh yeah, where did he, where is that? Oh yeah, yeah. So that's a really good one. I actually wanted to talk about that. So I'm glad you brought right. that up because it's a because it's a Chinese book. It has that um, context of. You know, I actually thought that when I read it too, I'm like, wow, having a population with pretty much one hair color make that, mm. what did it say black in, in Chinese? Yeah. 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 So it's, it's, you know, it's just a, and it's even a sign of health, right? For, mm. uh, in China and under TCM, if your hair is light, it actually means something. Whereas for us, it's just a hair color. Um, yeah. Different. So another interesting sort of. I will of, be shocked if one day I notice you have black hair. I'll try to Photoshop that. <laughs> See wanna, how that looks. I want to get a filter so we can do a live with my black hair kind and of. And I have gold hair. Lots of people die though. And um, Mr. Memnom sings the Baby Back Ribs song from uh, from Austin Powers. Baby Back, Baby Back, Baby Back Ribs. Uh, it's Candice in Danish too. Oh, so oh. cool. Jubaijia, I don't know if tea would help with our Florida mosquito. Right, right, we talked about that. So they're known to carry off small children. We have, I think that's just a thing whenever you get a lot of water, water and, and heat. Because in the summers here, which is the only time we have heat, um, yeah, they come out in force. What you need, Josh says, what you need is called a pillow protector. Those things, those are the things with the zippers and you can find them all over in Canada. Ah, oh. the pillow case is more decorative and unfinished slash not closed. There we go. That is a major pro tip. Oh. Thank you, Josh. That is super, super awesome. Um, I throw those tea for compost. Um, sorry. Oh, there we go. 
And Cindy says, "Ooh, I think sleeping on a tea pillow would promote pleasant dreams." Yes,、mm-hmm. I think it has、right. a faint,、uh, you know, tea aroma. It's really nice. And Josh says, "Oh, smoking insect repellent is an amazing idea. Got to try it this summer." Yeah, so we try it with your brood leaf. I actually want to hear back from everybody. We all, wherever you are, I'm sure, in one season or another, you got bug problems, and you like、mm. to sit out in, in Canada because of this winter that we we have, which was pretty good this year, I have to say. Super good. Really excited. We're and we can feel spring in the air. Super excited to get back out on the patio, which is kind of where this all started. Back when COVID hit, we started doing lives, and boom!、Mm. Now here we are at episode 36 of Sunday Tea Book. Really excited to get back out. Egg cartons work great.、Mm. We're going to be trying tea real soon. Do you light the actual tea leaves to drive away insects, or use some kind of wick? I think we're going to be smoldering the leaf directly,、yeah. and I'm curious to see if it will sustain itself. Because even the egg cartons, we got to relight it every now. You and have、then. to make sure you dry the、Fully、leaves、dried. properly.、Mm. Yeah. And just to be clear, I don't want anybody to get upset with us because we didn't tell them clearly. Use the brood leaf. Oh yeah. Drink yeah, it yeah. first. Drink, Drink it first. Drink it first. Is、right? it just a?、Uh, An extra use, right? For、know? example, if you had a pillow full of them and it was getting old, you could then use it for insect repellent.、Yes. Burn that up,、yeah. right? Then use the ash in the compost. Yeah, yeah, it's like the circle of life. Fast as finbo. Fast as a finbo. <laughs> What's a finbo? I don't know. I don't know. Oh, okay.、Uh, Mr. Amemnon, I will also find with a ebook version like you use. Oh. Yeah, there could be an ebook somewhere online. Right, I don't、right. know. Josh says maybe you guys can republish Chinese China tea in hardcover with your corrected translation. I think that would be a huge resource for the Western tea community.、Hmm. Josh then goes on to say, and I imagine it would sell like hotcakes, especially at the Toronto Tea Festival.、Hmm. <laughs> Zach Webb says. Yes. If anyone has a link to buy a hard copy or a link to the ebook, please share it in the Discord. I would love a copy. Whoa! Cue scene change. <laughs> All right. Great time to promote the Discord channel. So thank you, Zach, for、uh, mentioning that. And guys, please do follow Zach's clever advice.、Uh, if you do find、uh, China tea, share it in the Discord. If you're one, if you're out there and you're saying to yourself, "What's a Discord?"、Uh, there's a link down below. You can join it. It has the invite code that is right here. You can、um, instead of trying to type that out, you can just click that link. Boom, you're in. And thank you to all of you who are part of the Discord.、Um, you make you guys make that place so amazing,、mm-hmm. uh, for, for exactly for reasons like this, where you can share information on where to find,、uh, you know, an ebook or a hard copy of China Tea or all the other tea information you share there. It's great.、Uh, the pictures are fantastic. The memes, very cool. Anyway, so yeah, Discord. And Lolo, I put some brewed tea leaves on basil in a little pot, and it grew like crazy. Bingo! Fertilizer comment. I didn't miss anything, right? I think I'm good. Heresy is when people do definitely bad things and say they're good. What you're doing is awesome. It's experimentation, so it's not a heretic, but a mad scientist like me. Yes, yes. that's perfect. A mad scientist idea. Good one. Time signature MMA. Holy mad scientist. Clifford Little says <laughs> da hong pao is roasted regularly, so frying. Is not a problem. It will reduce grassy notes from lightly roasted. I'm not sure what you're getting at there, but that's cool. Yeah, it is.、Uh, it is a roasted tea. So, like we said with this tea,、uh, it was roasted back in 2014. So, didn't need a re-roast and doesn't need a re-roast. This is an indicator of quality. That isn't to say if your tea does need a little annual re-roast bump.、Uh, not that's not like the end of the world. But it is definitely an indicator of quality when a tea can、uh, sustain its amazing depth and flavor and not require a re-roast.、Mm-hmm. Um, Ijo Oolong, even more、uh, mind-blowing in that regard, a 2002 aged tea available on our website, still never re-roasted. Super, super mad scientist, crazy. I'll take mad scientist. Yes. And Josh says, "Yay, East Frisian tea ceremony from Germany is super interesting." What? Yay, East Frisian tea ceremony from Germany is super interesting and uses very strong Assam India blended brew with hard with special rock sugar and cream, and the sugar cracks loudly when you add when you add it to the、oh, hot, hot water or something. Hot tea. Hot tea. Oh, oh very cool. cool. 
Mad scientist. I like it. Oh. Mad scientist. I don't mind bugs like in a crazy way, but my dad is super allergic to bees and wasps. So we're always running inside during outdoor dinners if bees show up because he can't get stung. So this would help tons. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Uh, like, like I said, ours goes out and needs relighting a lot. So, and how do we find out? Because the bugs come. So, you know, <laughs> if your dad's super allergic, like he might need to carry a little thing of burning Sometimes tea Sometimes it's the it. device of where you light it. Yeah. If it's a careful engineer, the, uh, the, the airflow is good. It, mm. con it continues yeah. for a while. Yeah. We use a barbecue. <laughs> yeah. We use a barbecue. We're low, low tech. Finbo equals a person from the Danish island of Funen. Oh. oh. Okay. Cool. I didn't know that. Now I want to oh, see what he cool. said about Finbo. Finbo. Okay, we got to move on. We got to move on. I'll come back to that. I'll come back to it. All right, time signature. As far as I can remember, Beirang is from Funen. All oh, right. Okay, right. We still have a lot, by the way. We got a lot to go. So I got to rock and roll through the comments. I'm going to take a little break. Uh, we're going to jump back in. Okay, guys, here we go back to, I'm looking for my remote. I do not have a remote heading back to the book. We have lots of stuff to cover here today. And I think especially the last part of this book is really good. So it's I wanted to spend some time bang, huh? on that. Yes, it's a valuable content. You don't hear people talk about right. a lot. We just talk about how good it is to have tea, but there are things to watch out for. Yes, so, yes. So yeah. stay tuned for that. So let's finish up with these interesting uses of tea. Um, I thought I was done. I didn't know there was more. Otherwise, I would have uh, finished them. But here we go. Oh, yo, I'm a little bit sorry, guys, for moving all over the screen like that. Detergent. It is much better and cleaner to clean the glassware with t left tea soup than with water. Generally, if the clothes are not suitable to be cleaned by chemicals, try to use the tea soup instead. Thus can keep the origin color and make the clothes look like new ones. In addition, I scrolled too much. No, I lost my spot. In addition, oh, thank you. Oh, if the grass mat, there we go. In addition, this is good. In addition, if the grass mat being cleaned by tea soup frequently, not only can remove the smelly chromidrosis dust, but also make you feel cool while laying on it sterilization and diminish inflammation being away from home if you accidentally fell scraped or collision induced redness you cannot find anti-inflammatory medicines you might clean the injured area with the cool tea soup and pack with chewed tea leaves such treatment not only to prevent bacterial infections can also be antiphlogistic and analgesic which is an indispensable way to deal with the emergency in the field and finally, removing odor. The newly bought furniture has a strong and penetrating smell of paint. Sometimes it can release an acrid smell that makes people dazzled. For the new furniture, we might scrub it with tea soup from top to, bo to the bottom, carefully and thoroughly. Meanwhile, put a bowl of tea in it so it becomes easy to remove the penetrating and acid smell, which has impressive effect. All right. Mm. Wrapping up detergent uh grass mat so i had to look up grass mat and i think i figured it out by looking at the finished translation which again is in the links down below if you want to follow along mm. that's your special sheet yes it's uh, uh in china i don't know maybe in florida do you guys use that anyway we have uh, two sets of beddings in the winter it's more like cotton like a regular fabrics on uh, hot days traditionally we in the summer in june or july we switch to those uh bamboo sheets mm. so the bedding bedding just the sheet like the the the, the duvet is still status quo we change to a mini thin blanket so underneath you it's only underneath so us we have i gotta one. jump in too because oh. you said bamboo sheet and people are probably familiar with bamboo sheets in the west which are that are like cotton they're like cotton but this is not. actually like a like a mat like a bamboo it really looks like a bamboo like, really, like reeds thin reeds of bamboo yes. woven together to make a blanket like a almost like what we would see at a beach a mm. beach mat mm. okay so oh, something like yeah. that okay but um fancier and a little bit more dense it's for cooling it's mm. because it's really hot 
and because uh, the climate is so because hot. it's really hot. I remember when I was a kid, I used to sleep every night. I remember I divide my bed into three sections. I sleep on the left section, roll to the middle, roll to the left, then roll all the way back, so it has chance to cool it because it's really hot. So, uh, so it's very methodical. Those are really. <laughs> Yes, I need to roll away so it can cool. Otherwise, if I roll to the middle and come back, it's really hot and instantly I just turn away. Right, it's it's the dead opposite of winter sleeping in Canada, right? Where you just you don't, don't even move. move an inch. Yes. You don't yes. let any air that's come the, in. It's the same for us in the winter too. Right. But that's the summer set of a sheet just to mm -hmm. cool. And um, that's we need to regularly wipe it. Right. Uh, to prevent like, you know, little bugs, a little stuff mm -hmm. because of this bamboo stuff. Mm -hmm. We've had plenty so of chats used. about that. Um, very interesting. The difference in climate is another thing that can bring about a whole different cultural perspectives. Um, and that's and it's an interesting topic. Mm. And the second one was talking about uh, basically if you have a shallow right. cut. Oh, yes. Oh, sorry, I'm yeah. going to the. I think that's perfect. Right. Uh, shallow cuts where you yeah. scratch the surface as red and minor bleed and you don't have any like a cream uh, or uh, like a you have things. nothing to clean the wound with yeah you can use some cool tea soup like and, a used and, and one most of the use of tea in this section is talking about either used to leave yeah. or you left over like or a tea like liquor this, this soup we've got yeah. a rinse liquor here yes so we could use that and don't use chewed tea leaves that somebody chewed with their mouth. That might be bad for your infection. Use, yeah. use tea leaves, right? Yeah, use tea leaf or use your own saliva to chew it. Also have uh, that. Right. Uh, what oh, it okay. releases is if you just put the dry tea leaves on the wood, it's dry. It doesn't work as much. The, the thing, the, the antibacterial... You want to get stuff, it out of the you leaf. You need to get that out. That's right. why it's true. So this is oh. really like outdoor surviving kind of a right. emergency if you go on a hike didn't have anything um, right on the other hand it, this is really based on chinese living right? right what i mean is like as a living in canada maybe when i hike it's more important to bring those cream rather than have tea with us well in china tea is just everywhere no 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 we're um, bringing the tea yeah like us for sure but for most canadian no people. them too that's why we're doing this <laughs> okay okay it I'm just saying that it has a living style undertone in it. Yes, yes. Right? So for most teasing. people would be, what? How can I have tea? Right, right. But right? It, I have for, to have cream right, in but, my purse. But it's but pretty tea. much something they have with them for sure. Right? Yes. And now you will too because <laughs> of my peer pressure. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, so and then finally back up at the top. The odor is... Um, it's basically working as a yeah, so it was straight up. Baking like, soda. I, I haven't had a piece of furniture that mm. pungent in a while, but I think I know what they're talking about. That new furniture, that new car smell that's yes. off gassing. Those things have been uh, over time. The manufacturers are getting better with it because yes. we found out how toxic those things were. But it's yes. a great tip. And this wiping tip is a habit. Like when we buy anything, come home, we always have to. It's not. It's a replacing. We usually wipe it with just water to clean it. Because mm. from factory to home, we need to clean it. Yeah, it's all just dusty. replace that with uh, uh, tea, water. tea water, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but not probably not everybody wipe the new stuff like. Uh, that's why it might sound a little bit bizarre to wipe that stuff. Right, of it. but it's uh, yeah, a little bit, not too bizarre. Okay. All righty. Um, you want to keep trucking? Yeah. The next part is talking about the four season, different seasons and different teas. I think it's pretty. Yeah. Let me just what read it. Should we? Uh, yeah. I mean. Uh, Let's have a quick read and go through it. Okay. I think it's pretty straight. Scented tea in spring. Uh, that was the first one. Scented tea is scented by green tea. Huh? Scented tea is scented by green tea. Drinking scented tea in spring can release the winter cold pathogen that gathered in our body, whereas accelerate the creation of healthy atmosphere. This one's a bit tricky to read because of the coloring, mm. but I'll do my best. Green tea is known, is known As for not fermented tea. As non-fermented tea, green tea is rich in nutrition and it has a medicinal oh, no. value of anti-hyperlipidemics. Nice, I have anti that down here. Anti-hyperlipidemics, yes. 
and prevention of arterial arterial sclerosis. Okay. Etc. After being brewed, the soup is clear and fragrant. While drinking in summer, it has effect on clearing away the heat, detoxification, and quench thirst. Right on. And then finally, I think there's another one for oolong in autumn.、Mm. The quality of oolong tea is not cold nor hot, and it can eliminate body heat to achieve the effect on nourishing the lung. Mm -hmm. And black tea in winter. Black tea is a full fermented tea which characterized by presenting a red color after brewing. It tastes sweet and has a warm nature and rich in protein. It has a function of refreshment, beneficial to thinking and releasing fatigue. Chilling chilliness is easy to injure health in winter. Nevertheless, drinking this tea frequently can complement healthy internal environment, help digestion, and strong our body.、Mm. Okay, so like you said,、um, I just want to roughly like、uh, sum up the、uh, this section. I don't think it's worth word by word because there's the two layers that it was hard for this、uh, translator to do it because there's T and there's a TCM concept.、Mm. In. When there's TCM, the translation is just straight up wrong. And so the gist of that is the、uh, springtime、uh, scented tea is very good. And in China, if you just say Hua Cha without much Like explain, just say sanity. It on kind of a default as a jasmine, jasmine green tea.、Mm -hmm. Why it's great in uh, the uh, green? It's slightly. It's not as cold as green tea. Green tea is cold. That's why, we, in terms of cold, warm, we're talking about property, not the temperature.、Mm -hmm. So、um, the green tea is cool. That's why we suggest drinking more in the summer when the weather is heat. It helps cool us down. Mm. Right, it doesn't work like ice, like a temperature that you cool. It's a cool property. Yeah, you it's know, actually a very interesting. If you feel that... really fidgety or、mm -hmm. anxiety or that kind of,、uh, you need something to cool you down, calm you down. That's、yeah. green tea cool. I experimented with this early on when we you first introduced me to the concept because I was a little bit incredulous because it doesn't make any sense to drink boiling hot tea in the summer. But if you give it some time,、mm. it really and pay attention to how you're feeling. When you're feeling hot and oppressed and kind of squished in the summer, and after you have green tea, it's not going to be the ten second thing like ice water.、Mm. But if you give yourself fifty minutes, a half an hour, and consistently drink that tea, you will feel like you can deal with the heat better.、Yep. Is how I would phrase that. So I encourage you to give that a shot if you think it's crazy talk. Right, and、uh, jasmine green tea. Now jasmine has a little bit of caffeine. Uh, green tea has a little bit of caffeine, so it's quite uplifting, like in、mm. physically. And the well, aroma. Jasmine had caffeine. Yeah, it has a mini bit of caffeine,、yes. so they they work really well、mm. together. And、uh, because of the process, it kind of softens a little bit coldness of a green tea. And、uh, with flower, usually in TCM, we、uh, believe they have that sprouting kind of uplifting, going upwards, that kind of a thing that help with what our body is going through.、Mm. Mm. In the spring, so if you go to a TCM doctor for certain disease in different seasons, they will give you different medicine, even、right. for the same thing. Because, you know how in the spring everything is sprouting, our body also have difference. It's changing too, even though we're not like consciously、right. notice that. But you know, like trees have buds and stuff. Sun is different. We react to those too. So、um, that's why jasmine green tea is very good for the springtime. Right. But oolong is more、uh, processed, a little bit more oxidized and roasted, relatively、uh, to the neutral side. So in the autumn, which is a pretty,、uh, it's going down, going downwards、mm -hmm. with the spring.、Uh, I mean summertime, which is a heated environment. Sometimes there's lots of imbalance happening in the autumn. Right. So that help kind of calm the body. While in the winter, it's cold outside. So we drink some black tea to warm us up. It's a full oxidized tea. And that covers that section. <laughs> Good one. No, I think that was. You're、great. a pro. <laughs> I think that was really good. I don't.、Uh, here's the thing, and I think everybody kind of knows this, but I'm going to swing back here. We'll go out for quick questions and then wrap up.、Right. But that is、uh, that. If you're interested in that kind of、um, <clears throat> that kind of view of health and wellness, which I think、uh, over time I've become very interested in as well.、Um, 
just to explain if anybody's new, we've talked about TCM a couple times. We've done a few videos and lives related to TCM. If you're interested in that, leave us a comment down below in the comments or in the chat here. Uh, let us know if you're interested in that. Um, for my part, as a sort of sciencey engineering guy, I was pretty skeptical at first as TCM is, oh, just another alternative medicine. But you have to realize, or it would be wise to consider that TCM is thousands of years old. And while they didn't have quote unquote scientific method to guide them, they were still always uh, changing, um, checking what worked, discarding what didn't work and adding to what did work. And as Jen intimated, some of the philosophies around it, whereas it's very individualized, it's very prevention based, and it's very much in considers the human being and the individual as part of nature, not outside of nature. Uh, it's a very interesting form of medicine that I don't think can be discounted just because it's not Western medicine and it's not quote unquote science based. Furthermore, there's a lot of science being done now to investigate the claims of TCM and much of it is coming out. Uh, I call that translation job. Yes, it's a trend and it is, it's a model. It's like Bohr's model of the atom versus the quantum model of the atom. Uh, one of them is wrong. Uh, it's old and we don't think it's useful, but it is useful. Uh, it's not fully uh, uh, useless just because it's older uses a different model. So that's kind of another way I wrap my mind around TCM when we think about hot, cold, those properties. It's a different way of explaining how the body works and especially in organs. Anyway. We, why did I say that? Because we could do, we could do whole, <laughs> I was like, huh? We could do whole, what are we going, we could do we whole going? episodes on this and that's why I don't want to dive into that section too much more and just say, great job, go to the next section. <laughs> but if you like this kind of stuff, let us know in the comments down below. We could, uh, we could get real deep into it. Quick look over to the comments here. And where am I in the comments? I'm almost all caught up. Uh, no joking about the publishing. Uh, we could even do book signings. I think it is a great idea, Josh, and I do appreciate the thought. I mm. kind of jokingly rub my chin because um, it's very interesting. It's a really cool idea. Um, I just don't know where to begin with it because it's a big idea and you're great at big ideas. It's a really good one. Um, Jubaijia says, is left tea soup possible? <laughs> okay, I didn't get it at first, but he's like right, leftover right. tea soup. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we're looking at it like rinse water and stuff like that too, mm. right? Or sometimes when you feel like the tea is done, you can just put in the hot water, mm. steep that overnight or something. A long steep that doesn't really have the yeah, won't really tasting uh, uh, quality, but right, it right. still has the color and stuff. Great to water the yeah. tea plant too. Great question though. <laughs> is leftover tea soup possible? Beirong says, you have a good memory at uh, Time Signature MMA, right where he's from, right? Yeah. Time signature. I have this super memory of a finbo. <laughs> <laughs> Cindy Tiescu says, wow, T does everything. Reminds me of the old SNL episode. New shimmer is a floor wax and, it, and a dessert topping. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's an awesome. I love those old commercials they used to do. I don't know if they do that anymore. My favorite was probably Happy Fun Ball. I don't know if you remember Happy Fun Ball, but yeah, also a great, a great product. Um, Josh says, are those bamboo mats comfy? Like, are they at least sanded down so it's... Oh yeah, they're ultra smooth. They're smooth. And there's even one called... Um, it has a little bit of a different name, but it's made of sort of like bamboo domino shapes. So instead of... <laughs> high end. Those are high end. That's my dream one. <laughs> yeah, instead of reeds, it's a, a bunch of these little chips, like bamboo chips, thin domino-like chips. It's much they, cooler too. And they're very cooling, yeah. They're and, pretty comfy, but you can feel the thread, like the... The, mm. the, 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 the weaving. The weaving? I don't know. Yeah. Is it the like thread the or the bamboo? The thread that uh, bind them together right. is slightly comfy, but feeling. when you sleep on it, it's very comfy. Yeah. And mm. when you're suffering in the heat, I'm sure it's extremely comfy. I'm telling you, it's comfy. so good. Mm. And Time Singer says, Ayo, did you mean fatigue? <laughs> Beirong says, Ah, yeah, you were also from Finn. Yay. Time Singer MMA. <laughs> TCM should be interesting to study in a cultural linguistic perspective. Mm. Mm. Yes. In many regards, it's very interesting. And mm. where to next? We told you this section was going to be good. And it will be if I can find the book. <laughs> Here we are. Back at the book. Oh, I missed my remote. All right. 
Drinking tea requires consideration. Interesting section. We've talked about how great tea is. Ew, ew. Now we reveal the secrets of how tea, no, I won't say it, can kill you. No, mm. it cannot, <laughs> hopefully. Anyway, tea, uh, blah, blah, blah. drinking tea requires consideration. Tea drinking needs to consider the quantity. If drinking too much, especially more strong tea, it will be bad for our health. Then how much tea should we drink each day? In fact, this has close relationship with our personal age, habit, environment, health condition, and custom. Not excessive. Do not drink tea with an empty stomach in the morning. It will cause chronic fluorine poisoning if you do this for a long time. Generally, 30 grams of tea a day, the intake of fluoride will not be excessive. In order to prevent the fluorine poisoning of the brick tea, we must control the daily intake amount. Tea drinkers who have been poisoned should not drink brick tea anymore. However, drink high grade tea instead. The time for brewing should not be long, nor being boiled and fried. I'll keep going. Mm -hmm. No drinking strong tea. Children are usually difficult to focus their attention. Thus, during the right amount of drinking the right amount of tea can adjust their nervous system, but not strong tea. The pregnant and girls should not drink strong tea either. The seniors who are older than 60 cannot drink excessive strong tea, for excessive caffeine will cause symptoms like tinnitus, insomnia, arrhythmia, vertigo, or frequent emiction. <laughs> Many people prefer to disintoxicate drunk by strong tea. However, it is also harmful to our health. Mm. Don't take medicine with tea. Chinese herbal medicine, such as Smilax, Glabra, Coptis, or Ginseng should not be taken with tea soup. The Western medicine that contains calcium, iron, or aluminum, and enzymic preparations, microorganisms, should not be taken with tea soup either. Furthermore, tea leaves should not be taken with the medicine that has a sedative effect on relieving cough, calming the nervous, aiding sleep, and controlling asthma. I'm going to power it through, okay? We're almost there. Green tea in the morning, scented tea in the afternoon, oolong tea in the evening. Hey, oh, it's so similar to the seasons. It's like a yeah. metaphor. Yeah, Drinking tea at different time causes different effects. A cup of green tea in the early morning can restore your mind and pure your heart. A cup of sweet jasmine scented tea in the morning can, uh, uh, in the morning can improve your working efficiency. Drinking a cup in the afternoon will refresh your brain. A cup of milk or green tea with some snacks will supplement nutrition. While in the evening, you can ask some friends or family members to get together, brewing a pot of oolong tea and drinking and talking, which will give you a kind of different joy. <sighs> Guys, joy. Those, those were the last words right there. <sighs> I think the, 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 the poison part is pretty scary. Yeah, right? I think it's pretty scary too. But don't worry, it doesn't apply to most of us Whew. at all. <laughs> so that is a, a symptom, like the fluorine poison is a common among, first is an older issue, like, uh, like um, decades ago, it's very normal right. in uh, the minority places where they drink, why they mention break tea, you were like, oh, fu cha, oh, we cannot drink a Hunan fu cha, it's different. <laughs> that, uh, you can drink Hunan and, fu cha, don't, yeah, don't worry. Old times, how they drink, uh, drink the zhuan cha, which is, you know, the whole break, really low quality, and they drink huge amount and super super concentrated really strong right? really strong because the other part of diet is milk and meat that kind of dairy and that's right. pretty much their veggie kind of diet so right. they have really huge amount and uh, really strong tea like in the end and the boil because they also boil we right. don't really boil as much and uh, they uh, traditionally uh, they drink a low, really low, low grade, like a lower of the 
lower parts of the plant which contains uh, more like the younger the plant the less right, the flora right. it has Got it. it contains more that's their diet so they have those uh, uh, chronic uh, poison symptoms like on the teeth and stuff like that right. uh, but it's uh, ever since that's been studied and stuff the um, they're in general we don't drink just as low grade tea as historically because right. life has improved kind of thing. Ah. Uh, it, it wasn't a problem for any um, uh, most Chinese people because we mostly drink green tea and stuff and we don't boil tea. Right. Uh, only in certain minority and you areas don't where it's so, so strong, we don't right? drink that so strong because our diet veggie. is veggie mm. based. Right. So. Um, it's just uh, it's a strongly related to uh, the culture, the the diet of that specific areas, mm. and and that's why there are people who are suffering from that if they continue that old style living. Right, right. Know? So, but to most of us, you and me, it's not an issue. Like, and uh, thirty grams of a uh, tea uh, is I don't think a lot of uh, Western people would drink that much a day. Right, it's, it's quite a bit actually. Yeah, it's quite normal for us if we we drink tea like a uh, oolong or even green say. tea because we drink nonstop mm -hmm. in China. So it's still pretty normal. Like we don't have that issue. So you don't have to be <laughs> terrified. It's not gonna happen. Even when you say drink a lot of food and stuff, it's not the same thing. Yeah. Even though here is a brick tea. Right. Yeah. Okay. So the big takeaways are um, good tea. It's less of a risk. Um, mm -hmm. The way we're tending to brew, like Gong Fu style yeah. and whatnot, much less of a risk, like not a risk. Mm -hmm. And um, quality matters. Mm. Mm. So yeah, probably the more dangerous thing in modern one is if you're drinking really low quality grocery tea is other things, not even fluoride, but... Uh, Still not much, unless yeah. you're drinking a huge Plenty amount. Plenty of regulations around yeah. it too. So that answers, I, I had a question about what do they mean by brick tea. So you've Duan really, cha. you've well answered that though. It's not just yeah. Fujian or, uh, or any brick tea. It's a certain grade of historically, in the context of this book, yes. it was a very traditional tea, uh, like that, those um, low off the branch and stuff. Okay. Mm. And uh, boiled and fried. Um, I'm not sure what they mean by fried. <laughs> Uh, that was just a little question. The time for brewing should not be too long, nor be boiled. I think they just mean don't boil the tea. Yeah, or you know, it's uh, fry or eat the whole thing, kind of a fry oh, cook and it and cook eat it. it. Yeah. Right, right, okay. Yeah. Again, with those large mature leaves from those. Yeah, it really is old style zhuan cha. Right, those, right. Uh, uh, Interesting you know, history though there. Like, yeah, it's how... more historical and old times that uh, you might have that and minorities. Even now the whole thing has been quite different. I don't think it's a concern. Mm -hmm. Okay, so then there's the uh, no drinking strong tea section. Mm. And um, I didn't... So the point out is for people to drink tea first, like uh, key groups, right? Uh, kids. Tea is good in general for almost everybody. Even mm. though we don't believe uh, belong to this kind of a category, we still need to watch if we're already very tired and uh, or we just recover from some sickness or stuff when we're weak we kind of kind of watch don't drink don't overdose on tea don't drink too much right children is one it's a little bit tea helps them focus but uh, you don't want to drink too much they might be going crazy right <laughs> overly active you know kind of thing and um, pregnant ladies uh, in china in tea region pregnant people we still drink tea it's more modern thing not drink Again, if you never drink tea, you don't never start when pregnant. Right. But uh, it's just impossible for a tea person to say, oh, I'm pregnant and I'm not touching tea. But don't drink too much. Like, uh, don't drink too much. Don't, um, don't drink too strong tea. Same with the teenager girls because the, the whole uh, uh, hormone system just kick in. And... Um, more sensitive related to mm -hmm, more period mm -hmm. girl stuff and uh elder people because of the heart system might be more affected affected by um by uh the uh, caffeine or other stuff in mm -hmm. tea just be sensitive when we're drinking tea it's a good stuff right. nothing should be 
Yeah, watch out for excessive strong, right? right. And And excessive caffeine. I like the, uh, I think uh, Clifford maybe pointed out that I had to look up that word, but he's right. Mm. Uh, Emiction, if I'm pronouncing it properly, does mean peeing, excessive pee pee. Excessive yeah. peeing. So yeah, it means the the caffeine has that to get rid of water, that kind of mm, a diuretic. Yes. Mm. So when that to kick in too much, we're losing too much fluid, which is mm. not desired. Uh, I notice because uh, in the West, uh, when we see uh, when we talk about tea drunk, it's like all oh, the pleasant, the kind of thing. It's uh, if you talk about zui cha in Chinese, it's usually a uh, a negative word, kind of. Mm. It's uh, your body start to have you know people start to say talking non-stop or not very clear it's 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 not desired that's why when we have like a tea seminars or stuff at least we prepare a little food a little snack right a little snack so yeah we're a little and bit we tell shaking people, don't come on an empty stomach yes. make sure you have a good base laid down in your uh, tummy so you're not yes, gonna get yes so when you have a certain tea drunk like a not metaphoric tea drunk a real physical tea drunk mm. eat something have a little bit of break from the tea uh, eat a little meat if you're not uh, vegan have a little like a dessert dessert is mm. good sweet to help with your blood sugar regulation like a tea could hurt if you like a uh, for long term uh, always in that kind of a shaking or a tea drunk state it's not we we think it's not desired for your health. Yeah, no, yeah. definitely. Um, and uh, the next I one. Was, I just wanted right. to say I was surprised that it's not good to. Uh, so we have this similar concept with coffee. When you're you know if you're drunk, you might have a couple of, couple of little cups of coffee right. to quote unquote sober up. Sorry about that. But um, it's also similar with tea. You shouldn't do that. Like, but people tend it's, to uh, do that. Right? We have that. Oh, you have that coffee too. We yeah, have and that. They, uh, any like cop will tell you. You know, coffee won't sober you up. You'll just be awake and drunk. <laughs> right, but it's uh, actually dangerous. It depends on the body, right? Right. But because of this one is not just a tea. It's a strong tea. Right. Because of uh, if you already having a lot of uh, like a drunk symptom, which your heart system is having a lot of pressure with the extra caffeine and other, uh, you know chemicals to kick in some people might uh, even have more severe symptoms having but if you you know vitamin c helps have lemonade helps well if you have a green tea just a light green tea avoid a strong kick right it's the strong light green tea has rich in vitamin c yeah you know helps that could help just right. not something super strong but certain areas some some people were uh drinking super strong to wake up that's not good for right. the uh, being drunk. And then um, the don't take medicine. I learned this pretty early. Like tea has that. Mm. Well, Shenong figured it out, right? Tea has that anti-poisoning effect. Yeah. Which is also kind of not good to mix with medicine because it can reduce the effectiveness yeah. of medicine. In general, right? if you are taking TCM medicine, you, uh, if not a completely cut out tea, at least uh, an hour before an hour after you don't drink tea and don't drink tea to help uh, swallow the pills or something right. like, right. Uh, yeah, because it's uh, minimize the effect of the medicine, right. which is what we want. So they're listed some items of tea, but uh, some items of uh, TCM herbs. But in general, we just don't drink tea with medicine. And there's all the Western ones, which... Right, which I think there's a couple words that were chunky, like these enzymatic preparations and micro... I think this is just antibiotics, microorganisms. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I think that's If you guys know, you can... uh, Well, we have it in the Finnish translation. I think we kind of sussed it out there. Right. So they can always check that down below. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. and it shouldn't be taken with sedatives too, right? Because then you're just fighting yourself, right? Yeah. One, one is trying to get you pepped up and one's trying to put you to sleep. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Don't do it. And then green tea in the morning. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this one was pretty good. Drinking tea at different times. Closing paragraphs here of the book here uh, has different effects, right? A green tea in the morning to help you wake up. Uh, it's, I don't have any problem with this and I love the ending. Oolong tea. With the friends and family, give you a different kind of joy. Mm. And that's what tea is all about. You know, yeah. get together with people, which we'll be able to do again soon, and share joy. That's it, guys.
That is dun, China dun, Tea, dun, guys. So done. let's head back out and see what the comments and questions were. If any, uh, TCM mm. should be interesting to study. Yes. Mm -hmm. Western medicine has many side effects with one declared to be the therapeutic benefit. Mm. Mm. Betty put a cup of tea there and a really cool emoji. Betty is like kind of the, the queen of the emojis here. She's got some <laughs> really yes. cool emojis. T by Danny says, I just had tea in an empty stomach this morning. <gasps> oh, it's Don't fine. worry. It's Everything's fine. fine. I do that every morning. Fine. It's yeah. fine. And you'll know. Um, I, was, I saw that comment a while ago and I was thinking like the best thing to do is just listen. You're going to know. Um, like sometimes we have a bit too much shampoo or something and suddenly... Yeah, this book really have a strong cultural background. There yeah. are lots of older generation in China who would have brew tea overnight. You know, it's a strong tea and have that first thing in the morning and there are more elder people and it's just not good. Mm. But uh, it's, uh, it's totally fine. My mom does that too. I do that too. <laughs> Lots of people brew that tea, just not a super strong. And uh, you're pretty good because you usually take a finished tea or almost mm. finished tea and do a long steep overnight and then warm yeah, it up in the morning. Yeah, I barely have any tea. It's yeah, just so the one some little warm. Flavor. Uh, flavor yeah. the drink to wake up the body yeah and it's a once or twice it wouldn't be any issue there's no like super high <laughs> it's then, okay I love the the screaming face though <laughs> yeah and then Josh points out oh wow way to leave us hanging Jen Li Wu master of the cliffhanger no conclusion so we want to read the next book right away <laughs> hopefully I spelled her name correctly really close Jen Li oh yeah no she you nailed it Just oh, yeah. no dash required but that's okay right. really good I think a mixtion is a um, uh, peeing too much. Yeah, too bad. That's right. Nailed it. Mm. And time signature MMA. A lot of people drink tea while fasting, though. Mm. Yes. Mm. Yeah. It really it's depends. To be consistent, we've even done that. We do that too. I can only drink a shoop work. Shoop. Mm. Yeah, I cannot drink other one. Like I told, if no, I don't eat no. meat, I cannot even drink shampoo. It's too mm. stripping for me. Make me yeah. craving those kind of things. But it really depends on people's uh, like build. If you have a really typical Western diet of a lot of meat and uh, uh, bread and stuff like that, you you can go through that and you don't feel anything. Most importantly is. Uh, not just a simply copy he's doing that he's fine so i can do it if i right so right but people are different you're saying it doesn't work like that you have yeah, to be sensitive yeah, like, to your own needs to right. your own reaction to yeah he can your... totally do it i cannot mm. i start to have that hard to focus so that uh, just pay attention to your body a lot mm. of times we really get signals that we shouldn't ignore mm. right and uh, uh lolo says Chaz Wei, tea drunk with the Chinese characters and everything. Cindy says, wow, end of an era. Betty says, drink a mm. cup before you go, go. Tea drunk, a lot of times uh -huh. we call that a drunk tea in Chinese order. So, mm. zui cha, we say that more. Mm. Drink a cup before cha you go, Cha zui is also go. right too. I think Betty was making a reference to a little bit of wan there, which I love. Mm. Teased by Danny says she survived, yay, but was very mm -hmm. alert, good. Josh says, gotta say a strong shen puar in the morning Drunk through all the infusions of an empty stomach is the best thing I've ever had for a super strong hangover, and I have tons of experience. Mm. <laughs> like, cool. And that's again, that's a really personal uh, interpretation, and your personal reaction was pleasant in that circumstance. So that's what you're looking for: is avoid the ones that don't work for you, and when you find a little trick or a hack that works for you, go. Yeah. yeah. And Cindy says, by the way, earlier today I had your Bai Sui Xiang with the My Tea Pal Yan Cha study. Uh, it was the only one with with uh, with lesser that lesser known. known rock tea. Oh, she was the only one who had it. Oh, right, that's great. Right. That is. It's a little bit of an outlier. Mm. And Josh says, at the moment you get hungry, you make up, you make slash go for some food and it's the best ever. Right. <laughs> yeah. That and an extra strength Advil. Those are great hacks. Tea when fasting helps with water retention. Mm. Mm. Interesting. So, so much to learn, so much more to do. I did promise everyone, I did promise everyone what's up next. Okay, Sunday, uh, China Tea. Let's bring the book over here. Let's honor it a bit. Let's show it off. China Tea. Okay, this has been a great book. I want to show them how thick it is. I'm... We started this, wow, so long ago. In the summer, huh? Last In the summer. summer, right? China Tea by Jen Li Wu is done. 
No, just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. Uh, a great reference. Okay, guys. Yeah, the... actually, I don't know where to get the hard copy. I should ask around. Anyway, it also comes with a little CD of how to brew and stuff. It's really good. Yeah, right here. So it comes mm. with a little CD or DVD. It's a DVD, actually. It says right there. Mm. DVD. So if you can <laughs> find it, it's got a DVD. It's a great book. There is a link down below to all the Sunday Tea Books, all 36 of them. So you can use that as a reference while you hunt for the hard copy. I loved Josh's idea. We'll explore mm -hmm. it. I really don't know anything about that domain. Uh, the domain of publication so I can't make any comments about will it happen or won't it I don't know I don't know but I do think it's a cool and interesting idea for sure mm. but really what's got to be on your mind next is the same thing that's on my mind and that is what happens next week to Sunday tea book what are we mm. gonna do so we decided not to take a break I think he we did she wanted to I said no break and right. I asked you guys a couple weeks ago and you said no break so <laughs> <laughs> the audience is not letting us take a break. They want more. They want us to keep going. They want more Sunday mm. Tea Book. So. I think our trivia question was related a little bit, right? The very yeah, first trivia it? question. Right? It was about the gent. <coughs> I, should, I think I do have a new I button. I want but a, a new, both new of us. button. So I if, can, the thing know. is, it, can, it works on both of us or none of us. Like, it cannot be individual. Uh, okay. What you did is Sorry, best. Guys. Turn it off. Okay, so I'll remind you the first question. It was about a gent who had two publications that talked about the origin mm. of the tea bush. I think, Why is that really? Is he the author? No. Okay, forget about it. Okay. <laughs> so, the, uh, the one, I think... Um, uh, mm -hmm. How come uh, you're slipping me over there? No, I think we're doing. We, I wanted to do, and I think you guys will be very interested. No, no, is, no, they will be. They will be. Okay. It's I can't do a drum roll or it's going to make the whole table shake. Otherwise, see? see? No, I can't. <laughs> I would love to do it though, but brrr, I'll do it with my mouth. So it's going to be super interesting. We discussed this at length. We, did, we had a, a live about it mm. and got lots of great ideas, which we loved. And that doesn't mean they're not going to happen. It's just we got to pick one to be next. Yes. So this so, is a long drum roll. Okay, yes. Synergy says, hey, hurry up. Come on. <laughs> Let's rock and roll. So it's about... 60 category mm -hmm. and uh, it's Don't the article. wait for it, okay? Wait for it. I know it sounds good. really boring. Right? It sounds it's really like, oh, we all know that, but no. it's not. Why? Because we're going to read the, 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 this article is published by the author, the, the guy who come up with this idea of a six category and his name is uh, Mr. Chen Chuan, is a, a huge figure in Chinese modern tea. Uh, he was born in the 30, 30s ish, you know, from the war zone all the way till late 20th century. Died in one, 1999. And mm. he committed his whole life to tea, built the first, uh, 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 he was the first to uh, craft or write the post secondary education for tea major. I hope. I don't think that sentence was no, that, valid. I Does that make sense. sense? I mean, I think it he, makes, he, he created a, a university course for tea. That's right. Right. Which the, is the already a bit books. weird because we don't have that. So, right. but that's a thing in China and has been, and this mm -hmm. is the guy who invented it. I want to back up a little bit and restate what you said in case it didn't uh, sink in, but this isn't about, this isn't about the six T categories. This is the document where the six T categories were incepted. Where, where, where they were, like he, mm -hmm. he defines them, right? Is that a good way to say yes. it? Like this is the inception yes. of the six T categories by Chen Chuan. Chen Chuan? Mm -hmm. Yes. So and, and he, this is a guy who is not, I don't think he's well known. If you heard all. of Chen Chuan, let us know in the At least the in the comments. West. I think he's way too unknown for somebody who did something of that magnitude for tea mm -hmm. and we don't know the name. Problematic, not going to happen. Not on our watch. Come to Sunday TV. <laughs> yes. And uh, he, uh, the whole concept of the 6T category and stuff was uh, brought out by him uh, in the 70s. And it was a series of studies, of many books and articles, many written uh, things about it. But there's one article that was published in uh, a national, that was an international kind of magazine. 
and uh, this one has the English translation by a uh, French. Uh, who is uh, French? Because that uh, article was translated and published in France, that uh, in a magazine about occur. It's a more national, international recognized magazine. So it was translated. The reason, several reasons, I wanted to uh, uh, share this article with you guys. First of all, six T category. Everybody seemed to know it, but there's so many discussion that obviously reflects that we don't know enough mm. about what's what's actually defined. Mm -hmm. Right? A lot of times we just simplify that for easy communication to say, oh that's process. But there's more way more uh, there are much more depths in it than just mm -hmm. the process. Right. And uh, it got left out and it kind of, uh, because people didn't dig into that, there's discussion, oh, this doesn't belong to 6T category. Oh, this uh, poor doesn't right. belong. <laughs> Time to go back to the beginning. Yes, to learn what. more before we can discuss, yeah, right? See what's what before we start yes. to try and move things around. Absolutely. Right? And very, I'm very excited because I know I'm going to learn a ton. Uh, I'm super excited. I have not read this publication uh, yet, so very excited to... And the second reason, which is even more interesting, because there's a translation by a, uh, a Westerner, who I think the English is very decent. However, there's lots of miscommunication. This will oh, be this even more... Be uh, mis how should I say? Misleading? Because the English is so perfect. Right. You know what I mean? Like yeah, no, if you notice, oh, this is an English by a Chinese or by other people, right. you might be more alert. While because this... it's so chunky. What you're saying is this is just like, kind. Of, we were talking about Wikipedia. Mm -hmm. It's well written. It's just wrong. Yes. So you don't, if you so don't know, there's, there's, a there's less alarm. alerts. There's... It's not even yeah, no, wrong. Not, there's not a misaligned wrong. little right. details. Right. So I think right. it would be this really is be interesting. Fascinating. Really fascinating. Yes. I'm super jazzed. I see a lot of people are pretty jazzed. Simmerjeet is looking forward to it. Mm. Uh, Time Signature says, holy back to basics. Sounds very <laughs> interesting. Beirang Hakimi says, wow, that doesn't sound boring at all. I look very forward to it. Cindy sounds great. Jubajia, excellent. Mm. Bruna, that sounds interesting. Yeah, I think it's going to be a really, Josh says, insanely cool choice. Simmerjeet says, woohoo, um, which I love. Always great to get new insights. Mm. Mm. And even cooler, in a way, not no no disrespect, Simrajit, but to mm. get old insights. Like, yes, and right? there's a time difference. It's like a 50, mm. 20, 30, yeah, 50, mm. 40, 50 oh, years and you ago. Totally glossed there over is that. a different. How the how the I heard you say six T categories and seventies. I think that will blow a lot of people's minds. Mm. You didn't have the concept uh, before. Right? It was a relatively a... new to help organize everything. Right. I bet you a lot of people, uh, because this is the tendency with Chinese tea. And his market, tea. his view, he what what happening at that time is so different from today. Right. So there's a little, you know, historical view almost. Yeah, yeah. we've got to put things in historical context. Mm. Mm. All right, so that is what it's going to be. Mm. Um, will you be sipping while we study this next week? I need to be prepared. <laughs> mm. That's very... We're going to schedule. If it was anybody else, Cindy, we wouldn't, we wouldn't take that as seriously, but you have a very <laughs> legitimate point, and we will definitely publish at least the tea mm. as soon as we possibly can mm -hmm. so that you can be prepared because mm -hmm. you have been very, so very prepared every time. It is absolutely amazing. We appreciate how you kind of play along with us. And, uh, and we don't mind if you guys sip herbal tea, if you have a Coca-Cola while you watch. It's all good with us. But it is so fun that when you guys sip with us and share the tea, it's yeah. kind of like gets us a little closer. So, mm. Cindy, thanks for doing that. And for all of you who've been sipping other teas with us. We love that. <sighs> From Chinese to French to English, a lot of ways to get it wrong. Lolo says that. That's a good one. <laughs> Wow, this is great. I'm really excited. I'm glad you guys are excited. You will go down mm. the rabbit hole on tea colors. Good luck, but look forward to it. Yes, we will be <laughs> avoiding rabbit holes of tea colors. We will be uh, down very interesting rabbit holes about other interesting facets of Chinese tea. So guys, that wraps up this week. Thank you so much yes. for sticking with us. It was a monster 36 episode. 36 episodes. 36 episodes. They're all on our website at the link KLT. down below. <laughs> KL team. Yay, KL team. I'm going to make t-shirts with the uh, kale and tea leaf or something. I don't know. Right. 
Guys, we'll see you next week for our next, our next publication. Um, what's it called? 6T categories? For now, I forgot the full name. For now, we're calling next it 6T categories. Next time, I will do a proper introduction. <laughs> and um, Coca-Cola is the darkest of tea. Wonderful time again. Thanks and bye. Thank you to all of you. You guys make mm. this possible. Uh, Jen, thank you. What a great, Ooh. we made it through this book. Thank we you too it. for doing all those hard works. Okay. He made all the productions and just sound effects. It's a blast. <laughs> Next week we'll have another tea trivia time. We're going to celebrate it with something. Regular size and we'll have some kind of celebration. Stay tuned. Check us out on socials. Click a thumbs up if you thought the content in this video was useful to you. Subscribe to our channel. Click the notify bell. Follow us on social. Mm. Most of all, drink tea. Go with peace and love, and we'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Until next time, keep steeping. I don't have my remote. i got to click on the mouse. Oh.